maybe. Any day now. There we go. Hi, Hacker Clan! Hi, How are we doing? What's up? How is everybody doing this evening? Oh, everyone. I hope you're all hey, uh... well. Hey. 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 Good evening, Governor. <laughs> evening, Governor. The static. Oh, boy. Whoa. Uh -oh. Which, which, oh, crap. Uh-oh. That audio peaking, my ears. Wow, oh, the no. clipping. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you no. gotta be kidding me. Oh, no. Everything worked so well when I was testing things. Uh-oh. Oh, ears. Kyle's going full butt. Okay. Uh -oh. yeah, so it's you. It's not me. Ha, 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 Tell, give, give them a warning. <laughs> hey, everybody. Cover your ears, and, and those you wearing headphones, uh, take those off. Yep. Uh-oh. Just don't yell, they say. Just don't yell. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Okay, let's see if that's any better. How does everything sound now? Oh boy. It never works as well as I test it to work. Please stop yelling. No minansa. You might hurt them. I'm sorry. My, My ears. ears. Screams in scanner. Nice. Pretty good. Seems good. Good. There we go. It's Gucci. Sounds nice to me. Much better. Okay. Good. Good. Yay. I'm so glad. Oh, man. I don't know. Test. <laughs> I don't know what the issue was. Try I had yelling. I had so many technical issues today getting stuff set up. What? You're saying try screaming. I'm screaming at you. Is that better? I hope. Um. Okay. So. <laughs> sounds fine now. Good. Cool. Everything's good. Good. Okay. I'm so glad. So. We're eating popcorn. Um, yes, we are eating popcorn. We skipped lunch. <laughs> I didn't skip lunch. I no. just didn't eat all that today. I skipped lunch and realized it at about 6.55. So, that's good. Um, oh, boy. What is new before we get started? Well, yeah, first off, uh, we're eating popcorn. First off, I have selected two out of three moderators from uh, from those of you who applied. Thank you all for your applications. They were all great. The first two that jumped out at me uh, were Jay and Avatism. So the two of them have been added to... Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's so weird that yeah, we can hear that through the TV. <laughs> so the two of them have been added as moderators to the chat channel. Um, so Jay and Avatism are, are new moderators on the channel. Uh, there is going to be a third one, I believe, just, just for safety's sake, because our streaming schedule is wildly inconsistent, and I want to make sure there's at least one moderator here for every broadcast. I feel like if I pick three did regulators... Schedule? You did say schedule. I said schedule. No, you said schedule. schedule. Maybe it's because I had popcorn in my mouth. I don't know. I did not. I did not say schedule. I said schedule. You did. Anyway, um, we are going to be English tonight, so. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while for me, so. Buckle up for that one. Um. So, uh, Jay and Avatism had had really strong applications, so I selected those two as our first two moderators. I think I'm going to add a third one because. I want to make sure that there's at least one here for every broadcast, and I feel like if I have three regulars who make it to almost every show, we're probably covered. Um, so thank you to Avatism and Jay and to everybody else who applied. Um, so that's, that's out of the way. That's covered. Uh, number two, we are still voting on new custom channel emotes. I think you've seen all of the ones that are on the docket before um, because I didn't get any new submissions this week. I think people have kind of, uh, <laughs> I think the whole custom channel emote contest has lost its luster for people or something. So people have stopped, stopped sending in their submissions, but uh, we've still got two more slots to fill. So we're going to keep voting until we fill them all up. So subscribers, you can vote in the chat. 
just type exclamation point vote space and then the number underneath the emote that you like the best. Um, what else is new? I did an interview with comedyandgaming.com, I think is the, the, the full URL. I don't know. I tweeted about it and, and posted it on Facebook earlier today. When did you do that? Yesterday. It was an email interview. It was a text interview. Oh, oh. But, no, uh, no, yeah, no. so uh, I did an interview with them, so you can read that interview if you're well, you curious. Tell me what you do on a daily basis. <laughs> um, I should know about these things. James I'm know. sorry. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, James. I don't need to know. <laughs> then there's, there's a couple people linking it in the chat as well, so thank you, Avatism and True in the Blue. You can read that. Um, I wouldn't do it right now because we're, you know, we're going to play video games. Um, so... Tonight's broadcast was up in the air all week what we were going to be doing because I started with a poll that uh, <laughs> the horse dating simulator won, <laughs> but it was one of four choices and it still only got like 30 some percent. And I got several people tweeting at me saying, do anything else. Don't do that. That's horrible. Don't play the horse dating simulator. So thank you. Just to, just to be safe, uh, I did a follow-up, or a runoff poll that was horse dating sim or literally anything else. Just those two options. And it was really close. But 53% of the people who responded to the poll said play anything else. So we had one more poll that was between the second and third choice options in the first poll. Multiplayer with those of us sitting on the couch, uh, or Laura's coming. Laura's Laura, coming. Laura will yeah. be here later, by the way. Yes. Yeah, she had a thing to do. She'll be back. Multiplayer with the couch was was one option. The other option was voicing an unvoiced game, and it was pretty close. As a matter of fact, it was skewing towards multiplayer with the couch, and I was looking into options for what we could do, what we could play tonight. And then, uh, like an hour later, I checked back and it had swung drastically in the other direction. Um, and it ended up, I think about 53% said voice and unvoiced game. So that's what we're doing tonight. The game we are playing is called 80 Days. And we've just switched over. What a transition that was, as I comment on it. Here good job. Is, uh... <laughs> you're, you're really good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is the, the opening screen for 80 Days. I know very little about it. Uh, it's based on the book Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. Um, it is renowned for its narrative. It's got like 93% on Steam or something like that. Uh, it's, got, uh, it's got a whole lot of positive feedback an indie game i think it's ten dollars on steam right now i got it as part of a humble bundle that was uh that was just narrative gaming humble bundle humble bundle nice. as a matter of fact that game that we played that i cannot remember the name of right now but the one that we played as a as a household that was um the interrogation room the woman in sitting her in the story. interrogation her story thank oh, you that was a good game it was a really good game that was part of this same hum humble bundle huh Humble Bundle. Say that five times fast. Humble Bundle. <laughs> um, so... I like Humble Bundle. Yeah, they're great. As a matter of fact, I saw that uh, on the Humble Bundle store right now, God Eater 2 Rage Burst, which I did a voice in, is available at a significant discount. It's like 15 bucks right now. You gotta link it back to you, don't you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so, we are going to be playing through 80 Days. This game... Has a whole lot of talking in it, but no voiceover. So we're going to be talking a lot. <laughs> Hooray! So. I know nothing. Um. Oh, right. I had one I more thing Northern I wanted Jones to cover Snow. before we started. One more thing I wanted to cover before we started the game. Uh, Jay's asking what system God Eater is for. It's available on PlayStation 4, I know. Um, the Humble Bundle discount, I believe, only applies to the PC version of the game. I'm not certain. I don't know for sure, but, uh, I would, I would assume. Um, so, a couple people I want to mention 
tonight. Who's Tommy Paul? Let's see. Going back, we got four days ago, which was the day after our last broadcast. Mr. Swoon subscribed. Welcome, Mr. Swoon, to the Hacker Clan. Bob Tom resubscribed for two months. Month two of what's hopefully many more, he says. Bashy016126 subscribed. Welcome to Hacker Clan. Nator donated $30 uh, earlier today and said, here's some pre-stream support in case I cannot make it today. Y'all have fun, pals. Thank you so Aww. much, Nator. Thanks. Um, Redria Wolfram resubscribed for two months. Yeah, already two months. Aaron Back in Black subscribed. Welcome to Hacker Clan. I'm sorry, it's a resubscription. Said, and another month onto the tally. So thank you for that. Uh, Emil3361 resubscribed. Bubble Buns resubscribed. Great, my food is already, I, uh, is already ate. I'm your happy Kyle McLady. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I read it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Toonami Gamer for Life hosted us with one viewer. Uh, thank you for that. A Nike... A Nike... Hold on. I'm going to figure this out. A-N-I-K-E-T-O-S-D-R-A-K-O-N. A Nike Tostrakon? I don't know. Anyway, I can't read it from here. Subscribed and said, "Who needs ears?" Thank you. Thank you for joining. Great. Um, Shala Kitty resubscribed for uh, a second month and said, "Thank you for keeping me company during con prep. You're so welcome, Shala Ooh. Kitty." And Bob Tom just gave us ten bits. Said, "Insert joke about self promoting for mod position." Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> so it's okay. He can in the running We've, oh he's in the running he's, he's, yeah he's definitely in the running we are no longer enemies um i have not ruled anybody who applied out but uh an eketos dracon an eketos dracon is that is that is that it i don't know anyway thank you for subscribing however you say your name shall we play a game does that support from Caitlin? <laughs> Bob Tom, you said you didn't want to fight me anymore, so yeah, I guess so. Jeez. Don't get used to it. I got it. It's a Neke Toss Track. Now I forgot. Anyway, let's play the game. <laughs> so, who's gonna. I know, I know we have two characters, the two main characters are both male. That does not extra, affect extra casting. Hard. What just happened? Extra, oh, somebody gave us money, right. I was going to say extra, extra hard. Just God, this is so confusing <laughs> that we can hear these things through the TV. And extra, it just sounds like it's coming from nowhere. Um, okay, so we will comment on those things when we get to a stopping point. Um, butchering names in a nice voice since 2000 whenever. Thanks, Nina Sorucci. Okay. Uh, so, the two main characters are both male. That does not affect casting. I believe they are both English. And the player character narrates everything. So there's a whole lot of talking for whoever we're casting in the main role. Why don't you be the main role, since... You know, you're the voice actor. Uh, okay. Well, we're all voice actors, but I mean, people come here to see you. True. Whatever. You speak oh. the most. <laughs> okay. You're also used to doing audiobooks, so like... You yeah, can... I've been recording one today, time. but that's okay. Are you kidding me? Also, it's been a while since I've done RP. <laughs> <laughs> well. So we'll see how this goes. This should be fun. London, 1872. I have entered into the service of a new gentleman. It would seem... He is a gambling man. <laughs> We're going around the world. We'll probably be speaking in several accents. 
Uh huh. I'm already liking this music. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna we're gonna butcher some things. It's it's okay. We we more than me. I'm a pale guy. Did you just say guy in the middle? Of that? <laughs> oh, nice. It's right there. <laughs> All right, we're starting in London. Monsieur Phileas Fogg returned home early from the Reform Club, and in a newfangled steam carriage besides. I helped him down, and the iron-lunged, steam-driven horses clattered away. So, who's going to be Phileas Fogg? The person that, is, that I am in the service of. Um, I guess I'll be... <laughs> Passport, he said, said he. We are going around the world. Oh, and we have choices. We're going to have a whole lot of choices throughout this game. I don't know if we want to take the time to ask the chat every time we make one. Um, maybe only on the, the bigger ones. Oh, passport two. That's the thing. Around the world, monsieur, I asked, utterly astonished. We shall circumnavigate the globe within, within 80 days. He was quite calm as he proposed this wild scheme. We leave for Paris on the 8.25 in an hour. Uh, but I have not prepared, I said, wretchedly, quickly trying to organize a list of necessary items in my mind. Then do it now. Pack an altimeter and my evening jacket. There is not a moment to waste. All right, Sherlock. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You pass a part out, or however... Passport two. Passport two? Passport two. Passport two. It's a French name. Then why are we English? Because the, the French and the... Whatever. Ah, okay, anyway. Whatever. You, Passport two, had now have funds. Your character is now steadfast. Ooh, we're traveling by map. We got a pack. Look, you're talking. Quickly, Passport two. Collect the things we need and we'll be off. Who's passport? I am. Yes. You are, and you're fine right now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, we need the pocket altimeter. We need the evening jacket. And we have options on how to fill the last slot. European shipping timetable. A slender volume listing all shipping routes within Europe. Routes for ships in Europe will be visible on the globe. Oh. I, I guess you are French. We are French. You are French. I am French. You're English. We oui, we. Oui. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know. Chat? Does anybody know? What are we doing in London? I guess I could have gone there. It's not that far. <laughs> I just assumed we were English. We're English. Because we were starting in London. Dude, help, help, chat. Where yes. Are we? Does yes mean Lirinary read the book? Oh, because it's based on the... Uh... It's based on the book. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so I am a Frenchman. Good. Yeah. Oui, oui. Oh, God. Oh, good. <laughs> so that's fun. how you're going to read it the whole time? <clears throat> no, not like that. Jesus. Um, inscribed with marks describing a recording of a symphony valuable in Vienna, Paris, and Copenhagen, this wax cylinder, so we could sell it and make some money. Um, <laughs> everybody's, we have a, a deck of 52 playing cards suitable for a whist drive or two of interest to humorous stalwart official and soldier types, or we could bring the shipping timetable, which gives us shipping routes. What do you think, chat? What are we taking? He's Pipi La Pew. <laughs> it's Pepe, isn't it? Not Pee Pee. <laughs> no one cares. He said Pipi La Poo. Pipi La Poo. He did say that. <laughs> yep. 
What's the point of the jacket? Uh, he said we had to bring it. It's part of the Englishman's wardrobe set. Take the goddamn cards. <laughs> Because we have trousers and shirts. Yeah, he told us pack my altimeter and my evening jacket. But we have room for something else. Inoki4 says shipping routes seem most helpful. There are a few people saying cards. Or maybe that's one person saying it over and over again. I can't tell. <laughs> um, people are saying cards. People are leaning towards the cards. <laughs> I'm bored. Take the cards. All right, we're taking the cards. That's what we got. Laura! Laura's, Laura's here! Laura's home. Get over here! Why are we yelling? Because okay. you got home. Our completed Englishman wardrobe should help us negotiate times of upper class jokes. Upper class? Upper class. Are we British? Apparently. We must Small. discover he our is. as we go. I'm French, apparently. Onwards! Okay. Off we go. Oh, I'm I, apparently I'm French. Which you should just be so. No, oh, God. <laughs> That's, that was basically what I did. Oh, well, it was close to what I did. Anyway. Everyone is being so nice to me. The 8 o'clock p.m. Amphitrite Express to Paris, departing now. Guard's van has space for one suitcase, which will suffice. Travel. This promises to be a bearable route. Oh, good. Off we go. Hello. Music is a bit loud. Well. The mechanical horses raced past Piccadilly Circus and Paul Mall faster than, than a team of thoroughbreds. Even so, the whistle of the 8.25 was, this is German, more than French. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cross a few borders. Even so, the whistle of the 8.25 was blowing as we pulled up to Char Charing Cross Station. I don't know how, how we say that. Charing. Charing Cross Station. All right. Uh, um... We raced along the concourse and threw ourselves aboard as the second whistle shrieked its warning. We barely had time to take our seats before the guard rapped smartly on the compartment door. He held out a hand. Tickets, please. I don't know. Um. No, he's probably French, right? No, turn cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're in English. You're, you're, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Alas, monsieur! That, 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 no, that's me. Oh, fucking fuck. Take it, Alas, please! Uh, uh, Alas, monsieur, we were in a great hurry, I explained, giving him a beseeching look. We did not have time to buy tickets. You may purchase them from me, the guard was saying. Though it's more expensive, I'm afraid. Eighty-five pounds, please. I handed over the eighty-five pounds and smiled a thin smile from one working man to another. The guard gave me our tickets and slid the compartment door shut behind him with a pneumatic hiss. Your funds have gone down somewhat. Really? No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> could, could they have gone down by 85? I'm on fine, Holmes. But we must make haste. Oh dear. London smog gave way to rolling hills and the pastures of the Kentish countryside, still untouched by the hand of technological advancement. Uh... Preach. I don't know. Somebody else on the couch make a pick. Just because, well, just because I don't want to wait on the chat to make a choice, but if, if the chat weighs demanded in before... to know the purpose, yeah. I demanded to know the purpose of our journey. You see, Passport said he. I have made a wager that we can... Right. That we can end we the can game within 20 game. minutes. We fell into the ocean. I'll be right back. Ah! We fell into the ocean. I can't swim. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Bonjour, mon amour. Oh, look. Go 
Those are. Those look like them. Oh, there we go. Can you see it? Yes. We're good. They could still see it, but for we, some reason, we could not. The game just decided to minimize them. Um, <laughs> It's a g g g g ghost! <laughs> Alright. Okay. <laughs> you see, Passport 2, said he, I have made a wager that we can circumnavigate the globe in no more than 80 days. Where's my mouse? There we go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> not 81? Indeed I not. I clarified. Indeed not. My master nodded firmly. We will turn our clocks back when we pass the date line. He turned back to his paper, perhaps overtaxed by the grueling duration of our conversation. A guard rapped on our door a few miles before Dover. Uh, <laughs> we're about to submerge, he warned. <laughs> Takes some people a bit funny, so watch out. Uh, somebody pick. <laughs> what do you mean, submerge? What do you mean, submerge? I cried. This is the London to Paris Amphidite Express. He explained, as though to a particularly dim-witted child. The submersible train. Talk of all the London papers. <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed it, I admitted humbly. Missed it? <laughs> he said scornfully. <laughs> has been examined and stamped with the artificer's seal. This is the world's only fatty scrape locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> that is an expert English dialect like, right there. So <laughs> Oi! Uh, <laughs> I, I could do better, but why would I? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> You're just from the same part that Dick Van Dyke is. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could not help a shiver as the fins above the amphitrite's wheels oh extended with a hydraulic hiss. Night fell, and we plunged past the end of the track into the freezing water of the English Channel. I, I could do better, but I don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna make all of the UK people want to. Oh yeah, they're gonna hate us. Oh, as an English oh person, I'm distressed. <laughs> The you just leave now. I'm so sorry. Listen, my darling. Have some tea. <laughs> relax. I promise. The amphitrite ploughed through the water overnight and splashed up onto wider gauge French tracks at Calais as dawn broke. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what are we doing? Just at these <laughs> I'm used to bad English accents, but oh boy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you have a route in mind, monsieur? Point. I asked, as Is the Lawrence water of... As the water of the channel dried from the compartment windows. I am yet undecided, my master admitted. The new canal has sped up the shipping route from... Suez? 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 Suez, Suez, Suez to Bombay. Bombay. Though perhaps we could take the Trans-Siberian Railway across Russia. <laughs> Which one do we hate? Siberia, Siberia. probably? <laughs> no offense to anybody in Russia. <laughs> Surely not Siberia, I exclaimed. <laughs> it is so cold and grim. And I have a particular fear of bears. Then we would do well to buy furs, he replied, refraining from rolling his eyes. There are other alternatives. We may also travel over land and across the Black and Caspian Seas. Because it's fun! Is it? <laughs> but uh, which is safest? Monsieur Fogg raised an eyebrow. There's no place in the world which is not safe for an Englishman, he said coolly and with great finality. <laughs> All sorts of privileges. Parbleu. I scarcely knew what to think. We arrived at Paris Gare de Nord. I have no idea if I said that correctly. Just after one o'clock. Automaton porters lifted our luggage and then our persons onto the platform with long, delicately filigreed iron arms. Paris, city of my heart. I was home. 
but not to stay. You sounded like you were about to break into song. <laughs> <laughs> New roots. No. no. Wow. <laughs> I imagine that's what Passepartout sounds like when he sings. Ah, please don't break their ears. <laughs> Tony says hi at least. <laughs> right here. Hi Tony. Hello, Hello Tony. Tony. Automaton. Some of our possessions will fetch a few pounds here. We will have to explore Paris to find an onward journey. It's like a young John Cleese. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, going to the market doesn't cost us any time, so we should do that. <laughs> An extra suitcase would be awesome. Eat it. You got any money? I don't know. Yes, we do. There's our money. Oh, we have, we have we got quite a bit. Pounds. Buy a suitcase. Extra suitcase. I don't know. Ten pounds. How? Do I click? No, that's closing the luggage. Well, let's see. What do we need? Shaving kit, of course. Yeah. Like, get low for <laughs> A traveling cloak, good for keeping out chill winds and heavy rain. Well, A magnificent bottle of Chateau de Kim 1860. I vote for alcohol. Oh, that's worth a lot in Berlin, too. We're doing that. Uh, geometry, geometry equipment. Bob Tom votes for a cloak. A cloak? And taking the Siberian path. Is it, is it an invisibility cloak? Am I like Harry Potter? Yeah. Alcohol to James. Alcohol for me. Oh my god. <laughs> They're gonna think you have a problem. I don't have a problem. I don't drink that often. Except for when they see you. <laughs> it's, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> Do we need a... I'm wasting so much time. Like let's, buy, let's buy a shaving kit and we'll call it good. I don't know if you we need the geometry equipment. But maybe you yeah, want to do man. It's valuable in Copenhagen. Oh, okay. Sell it is what's happening. A game of... <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got stuck in the throat. <clears throat> Phrasing. Some, one of us can take over. <laughs> no. yeah. A game of whist, whist later, I think. Uh, shit. We have no choice. We have to, we have to stay in the hotel. Night. We'll pass the night here. We took a hotel for the night. We will become comfortable here. Monsieur Fogg remarked. But traveling overnight will often, will often be more efficient. Uh, so we must board the longest journeys available. Perhaps. He replied. The short answer indicating, I think, that one-day journeys might be often be more flexible in their timing and could allow for more connections. Still, the surrounds of the Hotel Ritz were most enjoyable. The clock is ticking, Passport 2. We must decide our next steps quickly. Click the clock to skip. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is instruction. <laughs> To skip an hour if you're w waiting to try for, for the, the market, market or the bank. bank to open. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Uh, I think we should explore because that's how we're figuring out how we leave. New roots. We had a few hours to spare. I asked Monsieur Fogg if I might enjoy my city before we need we had to leave. Indeed. And should you learn anything of note, be sure to relay it. I nodded and headed into town. The talk on the streets was of one thing only, an enormous, elegant, oval stadium constructed upon the green fields of Champ de Mars and containing the technological marvels, art, amusement parks, and milling clouds of the World's Fair of 1872. Can I have a look, Roy? 1872. 1872. Uh, um... Six. But I was certain Monsieur Fogg did not intend for me to visit fairs, so I enjoyed a brief cup of coffee and then returned to my master, armed with some options for the next leg of our journey. Hiya, something green! Did you 
get yummy snacks at the grocery store. My character is now organized. Um, 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 I think we're gonna leave. I don't know, does anybody think we need to go to the bank first? Corn chips, delicious. The bank, the bank will cost us two hours and we're trying to get get around Only the world in 80 two. days. Don't drop those cases. Uh, just go, just go, we're going, we're going. Then take a nap yet. I don't want to go to Amsterdam. No. How do I? It it been a while. It's been a while since I've done. Army. Oh, that's how. Okay. Let's go to Let's go to Munich because we have things that are worth money. Do we? Oh, who has green chili pozole? Oh, but it's gonna we have to wait till that's, tomorrow that's to do that one. <laughs> I think this departure could be offered. Negotiate! The Englishman's wardrobe should yield results. Most generous! No charge, it's 6 p.m. Nice. Did that actually change? I feel like that didn't change. <laughs> Uh-oh. Damn it. We have to hire space in the guard's van to take our suitca extra suitcase. We are. We're gonna run out of money. I need space for my liquor. Boarding the Orient Express was an altogether calmer affair than our race through London had been. Mechanical porters loaded us in through the windows, then snapped them shut with a delicate click. Click. <laughs> How does that go again, Kyle? Click. Thank you. Um, all right. The train was extremely fast. The train was extremely fast and could sweep us across the whole of Europe, or at least as far as the Deutsche Kaiserreich or whatever the fuck, where the track currently Kaiser sees. Kaiser right? Kaiser right? Thank you. At last long, our last long whistle blew and we began our journey east. Oh no, Captain Rainbow got locked out. No, Captain Rainbow! <laughs> oh boy. Welcome back. My master wished to be undisturbed, so as we left Paris, uh, I left him and went to explore the train. There was a delightful dining car and an observation deck formed by the replacement of an entire compartment with an open glass cube. Anybody? I stopped there watching the scary scenery flashing. The scary the scary scenery? the just <laughs> scenery. Oh, there is just scenery. I don't know why I added a word. <laughs> no, right. it's not uh, because right. I barely took a couple <laughs> sips. <laughs> I stopped there watching the scenery flash past. And as I stood, a portly gentleman with a quivering, luxuriant mustache struggled by carrying so several trunks. Gross. Why was it quivering? I don't know. But it's a quivering, luxuriant mustache. <laughs> <laughs> um, I offered him my aid, and he introduced introduced himself after a shower of thanks. Who's gonna be a Frenchman? Not even a little. <laughs> Come on. Oh God, is it French? Yeah. He's yeah. Funny. Look at his name. Only the foreign correspondent of the time. Uh, um, I introduced myself in return. My name is Passaportu, and my master and I are going around the world. Then I wish you luck. He replied. He patted his breast pocket. The stories that you hear... <laughs> God, fuck this. <laughs> it, it seems everywhere is on, on the brink of one revolution or another. Oh, no. Another. Why aren't you speaking this in sucks. French? Is my question because you're both French. Seriously, everywhere <laughs> there is progress. Pro progress. I can't do this. You but who, will, who will count the cost? Wait. That sounds most uh, ominous. I told in him. In case chat was wondering, I don't do French accents. <laughs> Me neither. So. So who's reading so it? So I'm practicing it. Um. Uh. 
That sounds most ominous, I told him. Uh, does it? He replied with a beaming smile. Well, well. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. I am a journalist. In my, my duty to make omens. Good day to you. Bye. With that, he clapped me on the shoulder and headed off in the direction of the dining car. Um... We're not losing any time, so let's follow him. I followed him and found a few groups of people talking quietly. I... What do you guys think? I don't know. Are you feeling flirty? Or are you... <laughs> <laughs> Sit with the young composer. The composer. I sat with a young <clears throat> composer heading to Vienna for a concert by the great steam orchestra there. But he spoke of little but melody, harmony, and the progression of chords. <clears throat> I had an interest in music, but not an understanding, and so most of his words were lost on me. More interesting, however, were his remarks upon the political situation there. Who's the young composer? I don't know where he's from. This is me. Yeah, but we are leaving from France. We're headed to Germany. No. <laughs> Cannot, will not. <clears throat> oh. My uncle warned me not to play an instrument myself while within the city walls. Walls, But it is apparently forbidden. Um. Nah. <laughs> I kind of like the, the last choice. What do you guys think? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> talking about spoons. Do they go so far as to forbid the banging together of spoons? I asked, performing a quick demonstration. The young man looked pained and hurried away as quickly as he could. Goodbye. Ah, but everyone is a critic. I returned to Monsieur Fogg, who, to my surprise, looked up from his paper at me. What did you learn? He inquired. I told him of the dining car. And he looked smartly aside, clearly unimpressed. Why would you not tell him about the observation deck? I don't know. There was a journalist, there was... There was I thought that was in the dining car. It was not, because there was a third option to talk about the observation deck. When? Just oh, now. Yeah, just now, but I mean, but when we went off and talked to people, I thought that was in the dining car. It was. Yeah, that's what I was telling right, you Right, but about. You, you spoke to the journalist in the observation deck. Never mind. You yeah, made but the wrong did we choice. get any Your character is now shabby. Oh, good. My relationship with Fog has deteriorated slightly. I didn't start learning French until never. <laughs> Sorry. My mom speaks French. The traveling cloak should be quite valuable here. That's good. We will have to sleep here and explore in the morning. When my mother is screaming it angrily at me from across the house. We'll pass the night here. The Franco-Prussian War had concluded but a year previously. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that war ended. Do you guys? I went to school in California. My world history is not the best. Hey, chat. They, Help us out, guys. We're really bad at stuff. Did France or Prussia Don't win? Flaunt this it. War? Flaunt it. Don't flaunt it. Okay. Do not flaunt. <laughs> Thus, my French accent was a disadvantage during our short time in Munich. The concierge of our hotel was most suspicious when I approached the desk. I did not care for politics myself. What was the enmity of nations to me? Um, still, in order to avoid any untowardness, I... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Spoke as little as possible during our stay, and I tried to adopt a Germanic rather than Francophone expression to match, with perhaps mixed success, if, monsieur's, if Monsieur Fogg's faintly quizzical looks were any measure. Our character is now astute. Right, she's a dog is blinking. 
I want to go to the market. Let's just wait for it to open. <laughs> Talia. Talia is hilarious. I love <clears throat> that show. I love lamps. How do I sell stuff? Um, to drag it up into the marketplace. Worth 2300 in Berlin? But alcohol. We're not in Berlin. We're in Munich. How do we get to Berlin? Ah. All right. We're not... oh, hold on. What? <laughs> what's available to purchase here? Is any of it any good? European train timetable. There's some apples. One with a bite taken out of it. Gross. <laughs> of one interest to official, earnest, and soldier types. Yeah, I don't think we want any of that. I, I don't know. Um, let's explore. Then we can go to Berlin, and we can sell that bottle of wine for lots of money. Yay! There was little daylight in Munich. The sky was shrouded in steam and oil fumes from the tractors and hydraulic excavators in the streets. Good night, bird. Uh... Workers shouted to each other over the din of construction, while the more fastidious citizens wore dark cloaks over their finery. I brushed a few specks of dirt <laughs> from my collar. Uh, Absent-mindedly. Absent-mindedly. In horror! <clears throat> far more <laughs> intrigued by the gleaming machines remaking the city's skyline. What? Rumor had it that this work was the doing of the Bavarian king. But the spectacle was more interesting to me than the patronage. What does it matter who makes the machines when the machines themselves are so wondrous? Must we look for the creator's hand behind every gleaming marvel? I, fucking I shared this thought with Monsieur Fogg, who raised an eyebrow. All machines eventually go wrong, and then it's imperative that we know how to fix them. I felt altogether chastened. I am not sure I entirely suit I am entirely suited to the business of being a valet. The character is now steadfast. Let's machines are everywhere, leave. Nines. We're going to Berlin. Uncomfortable conditions in the open road. This looks like a bothersome route, but the traveling cloak from our gentleman traveler set should make my master more comfortable. Night tsunami! We're gonna lose some happiness on Monsieur Fogg. Wait, so the... That's the heart meter down there. We crossed from Munich to Berlin in a patched up steam carriage. The smoke pumped out of the back through a tall iron chimney, leaving a soot-smudged wake which trailed behind us like a flag. Our driver, Christoph, could not stop talking of his father, who was an engine driver and had just been promoted. German! Nope. So close to French. Now. Now I'm just listening to you do fucking French. <laughs> It doesn't have to be the you two every time. The... I don't know. Do German for me for a sec. Uh, our driver Christoph could not stop talking of his father, who was an engine driver and had just been promoted. Oh my God. Christoph has merged. I can't do it. Merged. Merged. <laughs> All the state railways. Phase into the strike railway. Yes. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> we have the most efficient system in all of Europe. Um, kind of. This is horrible. This is <laughs> Why are we doing this? Because he hates us. <laughs> Jesus. Let's just pull up all the accents that I never do. Right? <laughs> all of them. All of them. We're going around the world. Eventually, we'll go through America, and everything will be fine. But for now, let's continue to torture your fans. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds I'm, like an excellent maybe, option, maybe I declared. Everybody in Europe. Yes. Christoph Grind. Oh. Somebody be German. Just somebody. If only 
speed it is. Only be sure to have your ticket. I can't do it! <laughs> they have a little prison cell in the train station. No! In, in the train station for, do, for those who try to jump aboard. Remember, in Berlin, at least, a train guard is a direct, I don't know, direct servant of, the, of their Seven. country. Three. <laughs> <laughs> so he just gave us a free option to get to Warsaw. <laughs> Paris World Fair, a roaring success. <laughs> We were on the outskirts of Berlin <coughs> when a shadow fell over the steam carriage. Christoph blanched and crossed himself, taking his hands from the wheel. I looked up, not knowing what to expect, but the sight that greeted me almost defied description. An Ottoman gear-class airship hung directly above... I'm choking on popcorn. Directly above the steam carriage. Low enough that I could see... Oh, boy. I have no idea. Ooh, black pirate flag. When in doubt, pirates. <laughs> A black pirate flag <laughs> waving proudly from the stern of the gondola. Why would you and the name Cannaval picked out in gilt letters on the prow. We were under attack. Two mechanical claws were dropped off the side of the gondola. Their pincers gleamed threateningly. What have you done? Why would you choose that? <laughs> Why would you choose that? Because pirates. <laughs> Drive, Christoph! I shouted urgently, but with our suitcases on the roof, there was no way to achieve enough acceleration. Ah! Uh, give it all you have, man! I demanded. Oh, shit. <laughs> Shouting does not improve a mechanism! Christoph cried back, and he was right. Our shouting achieved nothing. And a moment later, the aerial claw had us. Then we were hoisted upwards. Oh, Christoph's prayers grew louder and more desperate. But Monsieur Fogg merely looked out of the window as we were hauled up onto the deck of the pirate airship. We have been adopt abducted, monsieur, I hissed, by pirates! Indeed, passport to He replied. <laughs> Two muscular <laughs> crew members pulled us out of the carriage and onto the deck as the red-jacketed woman climbed over the side, nimbly. She examined us with dark-eyed intensity before breaking into laughter. Are we being rescued by Carmen San Diego? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> an Englishman, a Frenchman, and a Bavarian. She announced. It is like the beginning of a terrible joke. Uh, why have you abducted us? Have fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm and this is my ship, the Canavar. I have little interest in your passengers. All I want to be is apart from your steam carriage's engine. Then what will you do with us? Captain Kasim's smile spread across her face like an unsheathing blade. Hmm. What should I do with you? She asked into the air, stroking her chin in theatrical villainy. Do we try and get her to take us to our destination? Or do we just try and brush this off? I would say tea. Always tea. You said always pirates. <laughs> <laughs> you got us into this mess. And tea will get us out. Chat, help us out. Tea or move on to the destination. Electra Heart, I agree. Everybody's saying tea. Awesome. All right. Uh, perhaps tea? I suggested. It is quite a parching business being abducted. The crew fell about in laughter as Captain Kasim shook her head. <laughs> really, you are too precious. I decided to... to 
to charm the captain. Try to charm the captain into helping us. You mean your friend? Surely she would appreciate the spirit of it. Oh wait, these are choices. I'm kidding. For those of you who are friends, I wasn't hating on you. <laughs> hey. We're kind of loving on them, actually. Yeah, it's true. French, the French are charming. Super charming. <clears throat> uh, okay. French wilds. Are we? Let's see. Uh, uh, we're. Let's do this. Traveling around the world. We are traveling around the world. I announced, and her look sharpened. Are you indeed? Her hand slipped into her pocket. I have something that needs to be delivered to the artificer of. No, 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 no. In Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be going in that direction? Um. <laughs> it's a good thing we're so worldly. <laughs> oh boy. Is is Istanbul anywhere near the direction we're headed right oh, you're now? Yeah. Well, we are gonna go right. We, we are gonna go east, but I think we'd need to go, go south, south yeah, to hit to Istanbul. Well. Istanbul. Um, what business do you have with an artificial? I asked in surprise. None of your concern. Was her trenchant reply. Well, are you going to Istanbul? Uh. I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to take a stern turn south. Anywhere near. Ah! Alright. Uh, uh, we may chat, pass. chat, tell us. Do it. Do it. Do it. We may well pass that way, I replied cagily. Captain Kasim seemed to weigh me up for a moment, and then handed me a small carved bead of bright lapis lazuli. Closing my fingers over the treasure. Take this to him. It is. Lazuli. I had to say it in audiobooks. Unimportant. <laughs> <laughs> she sucked in a breast. I can't He will roar. <laughs> Reward you handsomely. <laughs> I'm quite sure. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Um, <laughs> and what do you receive in return? I asked rather cynically. What does it matter? Captain Kasim smiled strangely and added, Forgiveness, perhaps, if there is such a thing. What could an airship pilot and the famed artificer of Suleimani possibly <laughs> have in common? I like my pronunciation anyway. Sorry, I'm not The rest of the journey. Uh, oh boy. I spent in interrogation, discovering that some, some buyers will pay well for evening jackets from Copenhagen. Finally, the Canavar dropped us off a short distance outside Berlin, having no further use for us. Christoph lamented over the scavenged remains of his steam carriage. My father is going to be very angry. He sighed. <laughs> 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 German side? A solely <laughs> congenial <laughs> abduction. I think they just yell. <laughs> <laughs> Any Germans near me? Please. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You can make fun of Americans. I'm proud of so. being American. <laughs> <laughs> right now, really, I, hey. anybody asks, I'm Canadian at the moment. Hey. Yeah, I'm horrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A surly congenial abduction, as abductions so went. Sorry. Gwent is a really fun game. I'm I love so Gwent. Mean. I didn't mean that. I like no. German. I know. They, they we, know. I'm so sorry. We had lost hardly <laughs> any time at all. And my fingers closed over the lapis eye in my pocket. How would I convince my master to journey to Istanbul? That comes in no. Relations with Fog have deteriorated slightly. My character is now organized. Didn't that already happen once? The lapis eye should fetch a good price in Moscow, should we decide to sell it. The Chateau de... de mm, 
<laughs> wine could hurt us well here. This is almost like, how is this still day four? <laughs> We'll pass the night here. Last night? Last night. Oh, look, he's okay now. Yeah, you just Sorry. need to sleep on it. We stayed for the night in the Hotel Adlon on Unter de Linden. Sure. Yeah. The main boulevard in the central mid district. From the window, the Brandenburg Gate was lit by upturned gas lamps. I went for a late night stroll along the avenue. Past groups of people drinking at low tables. I sat down beside I a pair of ladies oh, who you. were each trying to outdrink the other. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I kept score for uh, them as jug by jug they slid slowly underneath the outdoor table and onto the cobblestones beneath. The evening was riotous, and I learned from my new friends, Adele and Claudia, that the fastest way to Venice is via Munich. Ah. Thank, Thank God. 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 I, <laughs> I thought they were going to talk. That's <laughs> oh. the whole reason I yeah. picked that one. Yeah, we know. <laughs> you dick. Oh, we'll get you for that. <laughs> Jokes on James, he's one of the girls. I'm always one of the girls. Bu 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 we are bum. selling that for a crap load of money. Money! But alcohol. Do we James. want the Caribbean timetable? Tap. A railway whistle? A 63 toothed gear? Yes. What? Where? Why? It's worth Look. money in cartoons. in cartoons. Are we ever gonna go there? I, I feel like the timetable is gonna be better. What do you think, chat? Pick a thing! Do we need anything? Should we just leave that space open? Gear. Gears. Alright. How much is it? 78 Nara. Pounds. <laughs> Seems like you've made an excellent trade. Uh. Do we know where we're going from here? Are we going to Warsaw? Where the hell is Istanbul? It's <laughs> close to. Um, we need to go. It's near Morocco. Actually. Like. There it is. There. Way south. Ooh. We are never gonna go to Istanbul. That is just not going to happen. We'll keep the, the lapis, I think, and sell it for what? some money somewhere instead. I just, we're, we got to travel around the world in 80 days. How are we going to get there? Mina, I, I do enjoy beer. I don't really get drunk off of it because I don't drink enough of it. Let's just go to Warsaw. No, maybe we should explore first. Here's the three. Let's explore. Let's see what else we can find. <clears throat> you can go back to Munich. Berlin, they tell me, was once filled with the glorious sound of people speaking French. Not so anymore. Uh, now there is nothing but the clashing of gears. Every street corner is equipped with rot rotatories and wheeled systems that spin glass globes this way and that. Their purpose is quite unclear, but... When I investigated one by... <laughs> I, like, I like throwing, throwing shoes, shoes at it. You throwing my it. shoes at it. I discovered they were extremely robust. Not glass at all, I suspect, but some kind of crystal. The mystery persisted until nightfall, when these globes all lit up, and the people of Berlin clustered around the warmth of the globes to drink beer and converse. It seems they work hard here, but they celebrate with equal vigor. We joined the merriment, earning ourselves the offer of a lift all the way to Buc Bucharest from a stocky blonde man who spoke only in dour monosyllables. You done pissed off, John, please. <laughs> <laughs> I sipped at a mug of beer with a sick head and recoiled in horror. 
these fiends put wheat in their beer. <laughs> the afternoon turned to evening, and we finished our explorations of Berlin. Relations with Fogg have improved slightly, which is why we lost five points. That makes sense. He's really sad that he has something in common with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he'll take us all the way- Oh my god, we're doing that! I don't the next departure leaves tomorrow. To travel this way, we will arrive to stay the night. We will have to stay the have night. Have to stay the night. <laughs> Well, we're taking that that thing. Um, how do I? There we go. Good night, ghoul life. We gotta stay the night Bye again. Night. Spent two days in Berlin. Damn it! But we got a free ride to Copenhagen. With what remained of the day, I went to stretch my legs. Went to stretch my legs, but found nothing of any particular interest because we've already done that. Yeah. Oh. So, that's it. That's Off we go to Bucharest. The open road and uncomfortable conditions. This will be a bothersome route, but the traveling cloak from the gentleman traveler set should make my master more comfortable. Oh, I got. We gotta go. What happened to Cramp. you? Off we go. We found our German friend the next morning polishing his car outside the hotel. Uh, who's who's gonna be this German guy? The distance are sparkling, he remarked, showing us his handiwork, and I could only agree. We got into the back, and he started the engine, feeding in oil. The car was a variant of the Bozek design, manufactured in Warsaw. German made, our driver insisted. But I merely nodded. After all, who ever heard of a German-made car? <laughs> it seems most unlikely. Monsieur Fogg did not take much note of the car, and consulted his watch every few minutes. He was, I think, counting each revolution of the wheels and computing our speed. It's his version of Angry Birds. <laughs> Should we groom Fog, or should we read the news? Groom him! <laughs> <laughs> A shaped mustache! Excellent! <laughs> At midday, we passed through Prague. The car slowed to a crawl as we weaved through the crowds. I caught a glimpse of an airship behind a line of houses. And as we watched, it lifted off to who knew what destination. We headed on up into the mountains of Central Europe. We could have interrupted our <laughs> our somewhere. ride and gone somewhere else, but I like this free trip to Bucharest. On the next day, we passed through Budapest. Uh... Uh... I asked our driver about it. No, you fucker. And he shrugged. I know people who think of this as the center <clears throat> center of Europe. He remarked. But that is quite wrong. Where is the center then? I asked, so I could have guessed his reply. Berlin, of course. He replied. Our driver paused to take a sharp corner at speed then turned his head to me and smiled ironically. Uh, I was not sorry to leave it behind, hearing at the last a noise rather like a muffled explosion. Oh, Fog is not happy. Eh, I, I figured that's that's how I, uh, Passepartout would pronounce it. I don't know. <laughs> Artificer expedition rumored for North Pole, according to the Times. I am in a roaring health, but we must make haste! Trying to do accents whilst people from those countries listen 
I know this is this is like the most stressful thing I've ever done. And today I managed a meeting with the CEO of Hulu. So this is more stressful than that. You managed? I didn't manage. Well, I made sure that the meeting didn't, you know, explode. By the third day, we were settling into a routine. The mountains peeled past, and our driver drove with careful precision, managing each of the dashboard dials in a complex dance, like a chess master playing through a favored opening gambit. That was me doing that. Thanks. Um, I let him go on with it, and we probably traveled faster for my not interfering. Sometimes the best work a valet does is in waiting. Yeah, sure he does. Yeah, he's just 84. Still getting a little bit. Groom him quick. Pet, pet your pet. Thank you. Your attentions are most beneficial. <laughs> Our long car journey is complete. We stepped from the car into the gloomy streets of Bucharest. <clears throat> just after nightfall. Maybe you shouldn't eat popcorn while we do this. While doing a French <laughs> accent. <laughs> 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 I thanked our driver profusely. He nodded once. Such was his manner. I'm on fine form, but we must make haste! The lapis eye would sell efficiently here. I'm not paying that much attention. The lapis eye would sell efficiently here. We will have to sleep here and explore in the morning. Bye-bye. We'll pass the night here. Monsieur Fogg informed me that Bucharest was known rather wildly as Little Paris. Bubble buns. He was most certainly trying to make me feel at home, though my Frenchman's pride bristled a little at the comparison. I took an evening stroll from the hotel through the main boulevard of Bucharest, however you say that. No, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't hurt that one. <laughs> uh... It was paved in small cobblestones rather than macadam, whatever that is, or asphalt, but was lined with gas lamps in, in the latest German style. Gentlemen and ladies paraded their stylish sprung carriages up and down the avenue. It was undeniably charming. Uh, but no Champs-Élysées, no matter what Monsieur Fogg might think. At the furthest point of my walk, I passed a lamp cunningly fashioned in the shape of a lily. This was the output of the Artificers Guild here in Bucharest. I tried the door, but it was locked, and the lights inside were dimmed. Strange. The hour was not so late, I thought. For some reason, he noticed that with his brain and, like... I am pleased with you, Passport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am pleased. You may continue to serve me. We're gonna have to explore. Yes. So I should do that before it gets too late. We can't go down to Istanbul! Nor Constantinople. I took a tram to the city center, which was modern in every sense of the word. Electric lights illuminated all but a handful of shop fronts and boyars residences. Bozek cars sputtered oil fumes into the air and vendors hawked all manner of little automata on street corners. Ah. Automata! Ah. Ah. We can stop playing this game now. I saw the lamp of the lily <laughs> once good. more. I pushed open the door and immediately began to cough from the dust in the air. Blech. I looked at the dark-haired woman behind the far counter. She seemed startled at my appearance and narrowed her eyes in suspicion. <laughs> I... Uh, I mimed a lack of understanding, which caused her expression to darken further. She gave me a piercing look before switching to French. I'm Romanian, not a simpleton. She said curtly. I bowed and introduced myself. She gave her name only as Steinberg. omitting her proper title, which placed me in rather an awkward position. Uh, Madame. You think that's that's the safer way to go? I mean, 
married or, or unmarried, I don't basically, know, red, right? What's more, Madame? Madame Steinberg, I hazarded. Just Steinberg. She corrected Stanley. Now, what do you want here? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Artificer's Guild. So this is the Artificer's Guild? I asked, somewhat unimpressed. The Guild is not very popular at the moment. She allowed, shrugging. In the tendance is the current fashion. The Guild is too ot Ottoman. 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 I thought you were also, Romanian. I yeah. don't. She's speaking French. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Also, Steinberg gave me a look of frank challenge. The guild openly hires Jews. <gasps> dun, Racist. Dun, dun. Dun. Why is it that Steinberg? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guild As follows its own laws. <laughs> I nodded. The prince must know that. The prince pretends he doesn't know who keeps his crimes running and his gas lamps lit. I browsed the guild wares for a good half hour, but found little of value or interest beyond a single dusty medallion. Should we steal it? No, I just <laughs> ask about it. I asked Steinberg about it, and she stared at me blankly. You don't recognize an artificer's medallion? Where have you been living? London, I replied, though only for mere days before my master undertook this journey of ours. I explained our trip, or what I knew of it. So you are traveling, she replied. I envy you that. We are going around the world, I replied, as fast as possible too. That is the only good thing. She nodded, then pointed to something at the back of a dusty shelf. There, that bag, take it. What does it contain? I asked. On the side of the bag was inked a skull and crossbones. It is a prepar preparation of paraffin and crystalline ox oxygen. She replied. Will you be traveling by rosier balloon? Uh, what is a rosier balloon? I asked. She shook her head with some amusement. A kind of hot air balloon invented by rosier. She pointed at the bag. Throw this into the burner. If you do, you'll find an extra elevation will lead to considerable extra speed. Uh, what do you guys think? Chat? You said twip, by the way. And they all know this. Tweet. When? Twip. Earlier. <laughs> you said twip. Maui. 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 As a trip. Maui. You said the word trip. You said, you said twip. twip. You said trip, well, uh, trip, trip. That, trip. That, that is how you say that with trip. a French accent. No, you, trip. You definitely said I did not say trip. I did not say trip. Okay, bag, bag, and medallion, or nothing. Bag. 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 Bag and medallion, or nothing at all. Weep. Bag it. Baggy bag bag. Triple. Bag. Triple. All right, we're taking the bag. Take a triple. I took the bag, gingerly but gratefully. The artificer smiled a strange, dark smile. Then I took my leave of Steinberg and wished her well with sincerity. A most extraordinary person. I walked back to Monsieur Fogg. Bag it, bag it. You want to sell the thing at the, the preparation paraffin should fetch a good price in <clears> Hail? <throat> sure. Should we decide to sell it? Oh, Chloe, what do you need? Everything. Come on, Chloe. Come Actually, on. hang on. Market. We could sell the lapis eye here. Oh, it's not worth that much. Never it's mind. It's worth 5000 somewhere else. In Moscow. Okay. Yeah. Or, oh god, get me out of this. We're losing time. Or we could try and get to Istanbul and complete that quest. But I don't know how we get there. From I, here. Mm. 
Should we just go to Odessa and, and yeah, move let's on? Yeah, let's just go to Odessa. Just go? All right. Yeah. It would appear we cannot go this way today. That's a bummer. Um, we can't go this way go, at all. We can't go anywhere. Yeah, we can't go anywhere today at all. Oh, and that one doesn't get there till Saturday. Uh, departs tomorrow for... And arrives tomorrow. We're going. Okay. I had to make a quick decision, because we were out of time. Okay. <laughs> From Bucharest, we hired a Phaeton to take us through the mountains and into Greece. Uh, 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 where are we? Bucharest? I don't even know what... <clears throat> but Florin is... That's a Greek name, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what I... a Greek dialect sounds like. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Florin! The driver announced abruptly, sticking out his hand. I shook it, though it was covered in oil and engine grease. Get in! He said, jerking his thumb at the carriage. We did so, and he began the process of igniting the boiler inside the horse. Is there any way to go faster? I asked. You can't flog a mechanical horse, he answered solemnly, as though giving me a piece of hard-earned wisdom. A fair point, I agreed. Then he released the handbrake, and we began to crawl away up the road. Relations with Fog have deteriorated slightly. I am displeased, Passport 2. I'm sorry. Your choices are very poor. Let's converse. <laughs> you're talking to yourself. <laughs> oh, wait, or am I? I think I'm that guy. Yeah. Greetings, Monsieur Florin. Just Florin. I am sure you know all about Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki is named after a half-sister of Alexander the Great. Uh... <laughs> because I don't know what this guy actually sounds like. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is there a route from Thessaloniki to Izmir? No idea. But now, the Ottoman inventor Hayyan al safa died in Izmir. That's not good. Uh... Is it possible to go from Thessaloniki to Meteora Valley? Yes, one can drive in the carriage from Thessaloniki to Meteora, Meteora Valley, but there is not much room for luggage. Whist, I'll cut, Monsieur Florin, and you deal. Thank you. Uh, do tell me more about Meteora Valley. I tend not to discuss such things. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible to go to, uh, from Meteora Valley to Tehran? I think you're out of luck here. Yeah. Can you travel from Meteora Valley to Bormen Fontaine? Did you know some buyers will pay well for woolen cloaks from Bormen Fontaine? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go to the first. <laughs> <laughs> We rode the first day in relative silence, watching the forests pass us by on either side. Are these roads not prone to banditry? I asked, looking into the tree-lined depths. Not bandits! Florin replied. Bears! <laughs> and what do we do if we see a bear? I demanded. Speed up! Said he, with every appearance of cheer. From the back, my master remarked. Then let, let us hope we see, then we see one. I could scarcely believe my ears. A jest! Yet when I turned to look at him, his face was perfectly and utterly serious. Evening approached. We can drive through the night, <laughs> as Florin said. <laughs> on the camp and continue with the morning. Uh, <laughs> drive all night, I demanded. Very well. The driver agreed, and we tried to sleep as the car rumbled and rocked its way onwards through the dark, gaining us a few hours and leaving any bears behind. It was not a comfortable ride for any of us, I think. My character is now presentable. That's my natural speaking voice, actually. I don't know. 
This jelly oh. is something, God. but we Damn have minimized it. once again. And Kyle. We fell into the ocean. Oh, oh my God! God. Like, what are you doing? Oh, Jesus. this this is this is probably the the best stream we've ever had. I found it. I found it. It's all good. Well, now this journey is proving more tiring than I expected. <laughs> Uh, so, still Florin talking. <laughs> so you're going to Greece? Our driver asked when I woke up to find ourselves still moving along. We are going to Istanbul. <laughs> Florin giggled. <laughs> so you're going to Bucharest to Istanbul via Greece? Did you ever see a map? <laughs> <laughs> There's something we need to do first. He shrugged. Like traveling then, do you? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I know a man from Athens. Florin grumbled. He runs boats. The contempt in his voice was all too clear. The boats too well. Cairo, I think. Florin smiled. I can do boats. How might we find him? At the docks, he replied with pleasingly little sarcasm. His name is Sophos. I'll put a word for you when I talk to him tonight. Uh, uh, we'd appreciate that, I replied. Florin giggled. I do not think he was quite sound in the <laughs> head. But if he had a good route onwards, then perhaps that did not matter. A few hours later, we crested the last rise, and the glittering Aegean Sea was on the horizon. We had crossed the breadths of Europe. The breasts of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a whole world left to travel. Yeah! And Florin was right. We were not going in a straight line. <laughs> I just want to get to Istanbul. You can imagine. You can manage another case, can't you, Passport Two? That's money. We'll pass the night here. Night. The people of this city are crazy. They go out in the evenings to tear down what remains of their city wall. You've never seen such a thing. Uh, granted, it is not as though the walls keep anything out. They encircle barely half the city and are easily scalable due to the quantity of rubble piled up this side and that. I stopped a young woman and asked what they were doing, but she only laughed in my face. You mean I know our city now? She replied, <laughs> not in the least bit answering my question. But soon we will encompass the entirety of Northern Greece. The Greeks do not sound like that. <laughs> don't be a racist. <laughs> Maybe they do. I <laughs> remarked that it seemed unlikely, but she did not stay to listen to my point, thankfully. Bye. Preferring to raise the sledgehammer she had brought along for the occasion. Bye. <laughs> she set about the walls once more, and I scurried away lest I lose my hat from a piece of flying stone. Bye! <laughs> oh, God. You love me. Bubble Bun says, Laura's voice is why I saw... We found a way to Istanbul! <laughs> I took a few hours to explore, investigating the various options for how we might continue our journey. 600,000 pounds to go. And you have to ride on a spike in your butt. What? <laughs> to Istanbul? Yes. I suspect this departure could be altered. Negotiate. Thoroughly and ungentlemanly behavior. Oh. Just to get it to leave a day earlier, it's 620 extra pounds. Ah, uh, do we do it or no? gonna get from finishing this quest no dice no dice not, not yet. yet oh my god people actually spoke like that to you in life i'm so sorry well 
Let's look at the market. There's a Canadian time trade <laughs> timetable. Train time Train timetable. Time Egyptian cigars. Leather gloves, part of the open road set. Isn't that the traveling clothes? Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's the gentleman no. set. Uh Egyptian cigars of interest to soldiers. Let's get the gloves. Or close it. It's not what I was trying to do. That is not what I wanted to buy, but I did it anyway. But you did it. I'm proud of you, buddy. <laughs> and... You want this? Yeah, sure, why not. We found That's train funny. routes that will help us Later in eventually, life. if we ever get to Canada. One can drive in the carrot to the pop. <laughs> we well, <you> missed it. <laughs> Can we leave yet? Another gloves? My guess is that you? I think this departure could. Nope. Nope. No, you may not. Go to bed. Ah. Go to bed. Who we'll passed the night here? As night fell, I. Pet your master on the head. I think... Okay. I afforded my master every service, ensuring he had fresh tea with the hopes he would have a restorative night. This pleases me. I am in a roaring... I am in roaring health, but we must make haste. I want to know what roaring health is. Raw. Okay. Please, can we leave? Ah. No, you still must be. We could go today for an extra 620 pounds, but people said no. No, don't do it! Go hey, Shaman! Hi, Shaman! Whoa. Okay, well, uh, in that case, this is a good time to take a second and catch up on notifications and stuff. Let's see what's going oh, on. This feeling grand? Feeling grand. Let's see here. Jessa Kid has hosted us with one viewer. Thank you for that. Aaron back in black donated five dollars. Just a little added support on top of my subscription. Thank, Thank you. Sweetheart. Pause the game, Kyle. Pause the game. I'm trying to let time tick because we can't I'm leave just, until I'm tomorrow. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading what was on the screen. I I get it. Uh, the dude has resubscribed for two months. Welcome back, honey. Said Caillou, best streamer. Thank you, the dude. True in the blue gave us two bits. Thank you, True in the Blue. All right. It's hard to blow a kiss when I'm actively drinking something. I just feel like it's bad. I'm a smart. I guess we'll <laughs> sit in the hotel. We'll pass the night here. Bye-bye. Before retiring, I went out to explore a little and entered into conversation with a remarkably energetic Turkish, Turkish soldier who had mislaid a locket, which I spotted, and who then, between fits of great political passion, told me that you could get, from, get to Istanbul from Izmir by public carriage, but that it was slow going. I, um... I, I... Uh, Ask him how he knew. I asked him how he knew, and he launched into a long and complicated story about his mother's aunt's sister-in-law, a convoluted tale, and one better forgotten. Well, that doesn't help us. We're going... Whatever. Off we go. On the Istanbul Express. We boarded the train promptly, despite a crazed man who blocked our pass. <laughs> he was trying to tell me something, and I paused to listen. The artificials! <laughs> he hissed. <laughs> they aren't content to just make. Believe me, they long to destroy. <laughs> I prescribed a cup of tea and some rest, and he nodded vigorously. <sighs> but they won't stop telling me that plan. He murmured. They want to talk all the time! We nodded farewell and stepped onto the train. I thought he 
<laughs> Greetings, Monsieur Apostoles. Caitlin, you want to read a guy? Uh, he's probably Greek, but it doesn't oh, matter. Just God. we no. we don't know Ask what Greek to sounds. My good man. <laughs> um, I need to know about Istanbul. I could tell you about a time. <laughs> Is there a route from Istanbul to Mount El Elbrus? No such route, I'd wager. Is there a route from Istanbul <laughs> to Baghdad? Now you listen to me. Some buyers will pay well for woolen cloaks from Baghdad. Oh, man. Goodbye. <laughs> Peace. You didn't help me at all. <laughs> not sorry. The coastal train from Thessaloniki to Istanbul appeared to be determined to go the long way round, as if the builders had preferred to stay in sight of the sea at all times for the good of their health. Ah. Uh, it, uh, it was if it has, uh, the... I enjoyed the fresh air myself, of course, with the sun shining in the Aegean. It was quite beautiful, and I could have been happy lazing by its shore if it were not for Monsieur Fogg's insistence on constant departure. In truth, we spent so, we spend so little time in each city in which we land that arrival seems to be an overstatement of the facts. On board, I fell in with a middle-aged Greek couple who were going to Istanbul to meet their daughter. Um, I asked them about journeys through the Middle East, but they shrugged. Who's the mother? Our daughter is studying Alexandria. I, mother, <laughs> not grandmother. <laughs> the mother said. <laughs> Kyle? No, the mother said. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to continue. So we've been to Egypt, to Luxor, the tombs are <laughs> most incredible. <laughs> we now cross the Red Sea. The train pulled up at Sir Ketchy Terminal, and I waved the couple off as we disembarked. Goodbye, young man. Goodbye, old lady. <laughs> 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 Hey, we reached Knockout Central. Do we have to stay in order to... How do I turn Market? this in? Do you sell it? No. no. <laughs> Ooh, we might want air sickness pills. Maybe. It's of interest to suspicious, prim, and excitable types. That's John Cleese all the way. <laughs> Or I could not buy the thing that I was trying to buy because I bumped a button. Good job. <laughs> That's part two. We'll pass the night here. Will we? I awoke this morning in the silks of an Ottoman harem girl. What? Worse yet, I was in the forbidden woman's apartments of Topkapi <laughs> Palace. I had, uh... It came back to me all too clearly. A shuttered, noisy Armenian tavern. Many cups of Reiki, the unexpectedly potent local liquor. A smiling Greek merchant telling me of the incomparable mosaics of the harem of Topkapi Palace, home of the wives and coal-eyed concubines of the Sultan. But men are forbidden in the harem, he warned, on pain of death. He lured me into a wager, which I had not the good sense to refuse. Curse my weakness for a fine mosaic. I bartered for a costume, reasoning that I could disguise myself as a repair woman <laughs> wow. and stride right through the front wow. doors of the palace. I claimed I had been summoned to see, uh, to see to... Uh... A the faulty one? No, wait. Water boiler or steam valve? Uh, in the baths. Or used for serving tea. Steam, steam valve. <laughs> uh, really? A faulty steam valve in one of the harem's many ornate, luxurious baths and was let in with minimal fuss. 
It seems that even sultans and their wives are servants to the vagaries of plumbing. I was unable to escape the same way, however. A lady blocked my pass, demanding my costume in return for hers. Uh, Madame, I will be killed if I am found here, I protested. Better hurry up then, she replied. We are both getting out of here now. I did exactly as she told me to. Soon she was the repair woman, while I was a lady the guards did not recognize or care about. And together we walked out through the front door. My new friend thanked me as I thanked her. Then she disappeared into the streets. I found Monsieur Fogg reading a newspaper back at our lodgings. He looked up and blushed a most violent shade of red as he took in my attire, setting his cup down with uncharacteristic force. Apparently we shouldn't have lost that previous outfit. That's what... Too late. Says. I gave my master a much abbreviated account of my adventures, <clears throat> but I do not think he really understood. Still, I stammered through my words before we settled in to consider the next course of our journey. The harem silk should fetch a good price in Hayu, should we decide to sell it. Can we leave this place? Do we want to? I thought we were... Did we not leave the thing in Istanbul? Yeah, we're in Istanbul, but I don't know what we're supposed to do here. Maybe I have to explore. We did, didn't we? I found myself in the historic quarter of Sultan Ahmet, in the shadow of the glorious minarets of the Blue Mosque. I had some hours before I had to return to Monsieur Fogg, and was finding myself attracting some entertaining attention in my flashing silks. Because <laughs> I didn't change my clothes. Of course not. I recalled my promise to the airship pirate Behie Bint Kasim to seek out the artificer of Suleimani and give him this strange lapis bead. <laughs> should I? I should probably change should probably clothes change. first. Yeah, you should I change. changed first, spending two of Monsieur Fogg's pounds upon a more respectable set of clothes. Ah, my friends, the fables told of the artificer of Suleimani's shop are mere childish fancy compared to the wonders I saw with him as I why? dropped this the This is why we can't have nice things. Why would you throw stuff? Sorry, Chloe. <laughs> uh, we have to go with the automatons, right? Copper-bodied automatons fashioned to resemble humans sat on overstuffed armchairs and lounged carelessly on embroidered straw pillows. In the dim candlelit interior... Uh... <laughs> I had to lean in closer. closer to make out the features of the automatons. Each face was etched differently giving an impression of individuality and live, liveliness. One of the automatons rose with a sudden creak from its sprawl, and I greeted it with a weak, shreddy <coughs> bonjour. Somebody who want to be the voice of this creature? Okay, then. I am an artificer. The, artist, sir. the creature grumbled in a low voice. Not some ghoul. You should be so frightened. It came into the light, and I saw it was in truth a fellow of middle years with a pair of brass and leather goggles pushed up over curling black hair. Uh, I am not frightened, I said, taking hold of myself. Phrasing. Just... Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Taking hold of myself. Of course not. Of course not. You were only surprised by my little clockwork children. He agreed. Each one is wound by my own hand. Behi Bint Kasim sends you a gift, I said, producing the carved lapis bead from my pocket. His face twisted with grief, 
and I saw at once that it was no simple bauble, but... Uh... Ooh. What? Uh, huh? what do you guys think? Chat. A coded message between old friends? Or the eye from one of his hand-wound creations? Creations. Creation says Nomi Clam. Maybe. Creation says Lyrne. I. Okay. The eye from one of his hand wound creations. He sighed. This comes from my very first creation, an automaton made for the Ottoman court. His face was carved from translucent jade, his lips a cluster of garnets and pearls, and his eyes from the finest gold speckled lap. He was sold off and lost to me. The artificer was lost in reminiscence for a moment. I don't know. Behave! <laughs> <laughs> I've been sending him back piece by piece. That's awful. <laughs> um. What should we say? Uh. Mm. Couch. It sounds most cruel. It sounds most cruel. Cool. I assure you it is quite the opposite. The captain is a good soul. He looked up at me and asked, Did she seem happy? She has found a home, I said, thinking of the Canavar and her crew. Crew. <laughs> I think that she is. Hmm. Was his only reply. He reached into his robes and drew out a bundle of notes counting out three thousand pounds. Here, take it as a reward. Accept or refuse. Chat. Tell us. Do we accept three thousand pounds? Refuse to be Or polite. do we refuse gallantly? Accept graciously. Refuse. Money. Money. <laughs> accept. Waiting on a few more people to weigh in. Refuse. refuse. Be, gracious. Be gracious. I think we got more more refuse. Roll in that Do door. we? The All right. Door. Why not Why both? I refused gallantly, not wishing to take money for a service rendered. The artificer raised an eyebrow and handed me a hammered brass coin the size of a shilling piece imprinted with Arabic script. It's a guild medallion, a sign. There are artificers that you have done us a great service. Perhaps it will be of use to you. I thanked him and took my leave. A strange encounter, and no doubt. The medallion should fetch a good price in Karachi, should we decide to sell it. Can we leave this place now? We can go far. We can, we can. go Kabul. to Kabul. An island? Should we do that? I guess we'll do that. Yep. Hi, this <laughs> next Thursday. Oh, I think we have to do this. Are we going to Tehran? The suspect of departure could be altered. The Englishman's wardrobe should yield results. No charge! Sweet. <laughs> Most generous. <laughs> the overhead rack has space for two suitcases, but we have four. We'll hire more luggage space. Oh my god, that is the coolest looking. Yeah. <laughs> that is an awesome that train. That is an awesome train. <laughs> A gigantic iron horse reared from the prow of the Istanbul Tehran Express, billowing gouts of steam from its nostrils. The Kamehameha was distinctly Ottoman in design, but where even the most luxurious European trains sacrificed weight for efficiency, it was a matter of some pride that the Kamehameha's engines used a carefully guarded new Persian design, supposedly capable of achieving a top speed of 75 miles per hour. Uh, this could tip the balance of power in the region, Perhaps even start a war. 
I began our journey with such weighty thoughts, reflecting with some sadness that steam power, for all its wonder, had only made the great game of empires more dangerous. You're quite flamboyant type, I see. Ooh. Why, thank you? Wanna, you you want to groom your fog? A cigar. Very good indeed. This horse reminds me of, of the giant horse that's out in front of uh, Denver International Airport in Colorado. <laughs> I think people really should look up the... There's a conspiracy theory around the Denver I International Airport. Th there's the giant horse out front that was an art installation with giant red eyes. Oh, yeah, we saw this when we went to... Yeah. And when, when they were installing it, it was supposed to go out to a bunch of different locations, but when they were installing it, the horse fell over and killed... <laughs> The, the the artist that made it uh, and I think I think uh, I think uh, Karen told us this story yeah uh, and they they just left it there because it was supposed to go to, to a bunch of different locations but there's a whole bunch of like conspiracy theories about bunkers underneath the airport and there's this company uh, that is thanked that doesn't exist in what the, in the building of, of the airport and the airport's like four times larger than it actually should be and there's all these underground tunnels like when you go from from the uh from the uh gateway to and you take a tram to get to the gates of the airport uh there's all these subway systems and you can actually there's areas you can go but you never ever see that's weird yeah um caitlin would you like to order food You want to take a look? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want. So... <laughs> Here. <laughs> I think Cracked.com did an article about it. Did an article about the yeah. horse outside of Denver Airport? Well, no, just in Denver Airport in general. Because, like, there's there's artwork oh, inside uh, the terminal. Uh, and it's, like, this really weird okay. mosaic that tells a story of the world coming together to take down this... Empire, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Bubble Muns has made a good point. We are not sitting in the correct arrangement for the name plates that are on the stream. I think it's I just Laura and I that are switched. Yeah, I think it's just you two that, that got mixed up. You and me? Yeah. It's, I am James. I am yeah. Laura. You go la 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 are they open? I don't know. It says so. All right. The first day was short because of our evening okay. departure, so we had just about enough time to secure compartments and observe our fellow passengers. A six-set janissary from the Turkish guard and a striking red-headed woman who traveled without a veil. Both were settled into their seats, eyes closed, and so did not appear open to conversation. Thus, I... Ooh, we could pick their pockets. Oh, shit, son! Or we could just leave them alone. <laughs> chat? <laughs> I wonder how many people in the chat have played this game before. Oh, shit, we're at this part. Seems like somebody is. Yeah. Should we let them be, or should we... Wonder idly if oh we can God, pick their steal. pockets. <laughs> James should sing the troll. Leave them. <laughs> the what? The troll okay. song? Yeah, troll. I let them be that and rested myself. I thought you said the like the cholo song, and I was like, who's being racist? <laughs> the cholo song? <laughs> no. Trollo Phillies Noe. Fog attempts round the world adventure. Ah. With another long day of foggish calm beckoning, I fell into conversation with the unveiled red-haired woman, eager to talk of engines and gauges and driver diameters. She told me her name was Ksenia Petrovna Volkova, and I asked her why her name was so very Russian. Uh, uh, about locomotives. She's how Russian. she knew so much about locomotives. Yeah, but we're, we're not. Right, but she's right Russia. there. She okay. <laughs> but I can't do a Russian. 
Who's who's gonna be Russian? Woman. Russian. Russian. Where? Oh, I am a scholar right of medicine. Uh, she smiled evasively and then gave me a challenging look. Do you truly believe that the Persians have a revolutionary new engine? I, I, I... Surely they would not lie, I replied. Oh, there are many reasons to lie when one is playing the game of empire. Cassinia told me seriously, before talk shifted to lighter matters. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Greetings, Madame Volkova. Passepartout. Uh, <laughs> She's horrendous. <laughs> One can also travel this way to Kabul, I understand. Speaking of trains, I understand Alabad can be reached from Bombay aboard the Great Indian Peninsula Railway. Okay. Yeah. But. Be back, yeah. How about, uh... Borscht. I don't know where any of these places are. <laughs> I like Borscht. Is it possible to go from Kabul to Herat? No idea, but now the kingdom of Afghanistan is a vassal state of Persian Empire. Now tell me, I imagine your godfather will drive someone like me. I can. Well imagined, madame. Why passport do I do believe you don't like me. Whist, I'll cut Madame Volkova and you deal. Damn stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what more can you tell me about Herat? I hear you can buy tea sets in Herat worth a huge amount in Agra. What more can you tell me about Agra? Some people who say buyers in Hong Kong will pay a huge amount for zoetropes from Agra. What more can you tell me about Hong Kong? You heard that some buyers will pay for Fuck it, Altmir. Altimeters from Hong Kong. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good thing they have one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which might be necessary for air travel if you ever get some. Calcutta? Yeah, the Camel Taj stopped for... Huh? The Camel Taj stopped for five hours at the Iranian border while various uniformed inspectors scrutinized our papers and peered into our faces. Weird. Intriguingly, Ksenia was nowhere to be found during this bureaucratic inspection and only reappeared in our compartment as the commertage started to pull away beyond the border station. What? She's up to something. He's the Russian spy. I... stretched my legs by walking the corridors. The Kamertage was bristling with uniformed guards who grew more unfriendly as I approached the front of the train. Two taciturn fellows blocked the entrance to the engine car, no doubt guarding the secret new designs from prying eyes. I... tried to catch a glimpse inside when the girls changed their shift. I discerned three burly fellows shoveling coal into an open furnace and a whistling copper boiler before the door slammed shut. I found a window and leant out to watch the view when I spotted a flash of red and saw to my shock Ksenia was hanging from the side of the train. She looked up at me through wind goggles and lifted an arm to wave and... Uh... Do we notice the metal gauntlet, or should we just try and help her not to fall off the side of the train? Um, notice, notice the gauntlet. I saw her hand was covered in a twisting metal gauntlet covered in rubber suction cups, much like those on a squid. As I watched, she determinedly began to sucker her way towards the engine car, phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> I... It was confounded but impressed by her mad daring, and I stumbled back to my compartment in a daze. It was at least an hour before Cassinia appeared, cheeks ruddy, but otherwise not a hair out of place. Madame, I suggested calmly, do you like squid? 
Um, Do you like squid? I adore calamari. She I agreed don't without. Know <laughs> she agreed without the slightest hesitation. I was starting to believe I had imagined the whole adventure until she added, particularly the tentacles, with those ingenious suckers. Monsieur Fogg looked baffled by the conversational turn, but we exchanged barbed repartee until, all too soon, the commertage pulled into Tehran Station. Unsurprisingly, perhaps, the red-haired adventurous had disappeared by the time I gathered up our bags. That is crazy. But by then <laughs> I was too entranced okay. by the sights and smells of the ancient okay. city of Tehran, capital of the kingdom of Iran. Traveling cloak can earn us well here. Sounds good, thank you. We could sell our traveling cloak. Do it. But we use it all the time. That's true. What? No! Oh, yeah, we've ordered from there before, and I had to go pick stuff up. I remember that now. He's a Nice, nice song. What I missed so far? You missed a lot of really bad dialects. <laughs> Don't worry, you haven't missed them. We're not done. <laughs> You're not done. Uh, we get to Kabul. Arrives Thursday, Thursday, and it's Friday. Friday. It's gonna take almost a week. Whoa. Oh, because it doesn't leave for four days. Your phone has stopped being a phone. Why has it stopped working? You can leave in two days for more uh, 280 pounds. Well, no, it's already 280 pounds. It's, uh, it's no charge to leave in two days. Oh. Well, it says the ticket will require a further 280 pounds. It's because know. you haven't paid it yet. Oh, okay. Well, let's do that. Oh, keys in the seat. You'll hear it. Don't worry about it. Why do we... What? What is happening? What? I guess we're not leaving for two days. Uh, so let's explore. It was totally southern, yes. Twice. New routes discovered that are... Not helpful? Not really, no. To say that the capital of the Persian Empire is modern would be to deny the unparalleled glory of its ancient monuments and palaces. Yet... Bayandur class airships hummed in the sky like scimitar moons, and mechanical palanquins, I have no idea what those are, adorned with enamel and gold work carried officials, poets and lovers up and down the gaslit avenues. Uh, yeah. The Kahar Shahs ruled over an empire almost constantly at war. Uh but the recent alliance with the Ottoman Sublime Port had allowed the city to prosper despite border disputes with Russia and British India. The city is a garden of culture and art, protected from the skirmishes along its borders. I sat in the cafes with poets as they dueled each other with words and competed for patronage. You already looked at this. You did. We're gonna buy that because we got room in our suitcase. Right, buy that too. There. Okay. And that. Ooh. I wonder if that means that we can go elsewhere. Do anything faster. That is a little faster, actually, I think. Yeah, because we were only... We were getting two days. In two days, and now, now we're getting tomorrow. So that's good. Let's take a nap. I wandered the streets once more. 
I sought out engineers and found them in the cafes, drinking heavily sweetened coffee and racing their inventions across tabletops. Uh... I spoke to the metal forgers, an older woman whose muscular arms bulged under her chador, whatever that is, leaned closer. Muscular arms. Are you? Am I? Maybe. Oh, I just... Jack my head into the microphone. Sorry, what everybody. What's happening? Where are you? Who's the older woman with muscular arms bulging? <laughs> the older artificers call us mere blacksmiths. She said, waving her burn-spotted hands. But could they make their wondrous devices if we didn't first hammer out their copper sheets and spin their wires? Uh, I showed them my guild medallion, and they examined it with diffident interest. Just because you're an artificer or a friend of artificers? Oh, oh this is I a different think? person. Or, Just yeah. because you're an artificer or a friend of artificers. A middle-aged fellow by the name of Graphique remarked. Does not mean you can make automata, of course. Um, but that is exactly what the guild certifies, I replied, surprised by his words. In other cultures, Rafik continued derisively, a copper lily may be enough for an artificer to complete their education, but we all apprentice to other guilds and craftsmen. To truly make automata, we must be jewelers, architects, shipwrights, cobblers, doctors, dancers. Oh my god. What does dancing have to do with artificing? Rafik's eyes flashed. What if you desire to be an engineer, uh, to engineer a mechanical capable of grace? Where better to look than the smooth movements of a dancer's limbs? I swallowed. Are you sure you are not a poet? And I'm a dancer, too. Rafik winked, and we clinked our coffee glasses together. Someone further in called out... Where? To Shashaha! <laughs> sure. And we all raised our cups. And we all raised our cups, and some wag added... May he live forever under the watchful eye of the prince! <laughs> and everyone laughed. Yes. That is my abiding memory of Tehran. Uh, a room full of men and women in the hazy light, raising their glinting glasses and laughing into the sunset. It is a city, I am sure, that will stand forever. Immediately afterwards. <laughs> See, I should I should know how to use some of these dialogues. I've worked with plenty of people from Iran. Uh, <laughs> so much freaking luggage. You did this to yourself. The Kamertage had extended its roots, and it now ran from Istanbul through the Persian Empire and all the way to the British frontier city of Kabul. I was sorry to be leaving Tehran, a place of true possibility. Still, the Kamertage left us in no doubt that we were leaving. Its engines fired, and we rocketed away along the rails. James actually used to be a dancer, guys. He did. Greetings, Madame Tamina. That's well too, did you say? What a strange name. Play, tell me about Kabul. Kabul is the northernmost city of British Raj. Um... I don't know what any of these pla where any of these places are except Baghdad, which is behind us. We want to go forward. Is there a route from Kabul to Bandar Abbas? I would not hold up too much hope, monsieur. Can you travel from Kabul to Ahail? Uh, let's just say that merchants in Rida will pay fantastic romance for demijohns of olive oil from Ahail. 
something. Ask something green. No, it's that not gonna happen. That has nothing what? to do with what I was asking, but thank you. <laughs> Jay started in theater. That's cool. Us too. Yeah, we yeah. all did. Yeah. Actually, I started in dance and then went to theater. Oh yeah. Uh, one of the Armenian porters nudged his Pashtun friend and muttered something uncomplimentary as he watched me struggle to load our things into the luggage car. Damn land whale! It is rude to stare, I told them haughtily. You look very strange for a servant, said the Armenian fellow, oh, whose no. name turned out to be Abadjian. I looked the man level in the eye. Well, I am a strange sort of servant. Oh, wait. We have a choice. Well, I am a strange... You want to pick an, a fight? Well, I am a strange sort of servant, I admitted, sinking on the unconventional services I had performed for my master since we had departed London. Freezing! They only laughed pityingly in response. Monsieur Abogian tucked a purple lamb's wool pashmina around my neck. <laughs> Perhaps this will help, he said, rather hopelessly. I stroked the soft fabric as I returned to my compartment. Monsieur Fogg made no comment, distracted by the whistles and Is shouts bubble go, bubble go which marked our departure from Good night, Bubble Buns. Good night, Bubble Buns. The Pashima scarf would fetch a good price in Agra, should we decide to sell it. I woke to the gentle rumble of the train and dressed quickly, deciding to wind my scarf around my neck in dashing style. Monsieur Abogian was entirely correct in his sartorial assessment. The color suited my complexion very well. Monsieur Fogg took one look at me and raised an eyebrow. Very vibrant, he remarked. Would you like it, monsieur? I asked, holding the pashmina out to him. Monsieur Fogg hesitated a moment, looking at my outstretched hand, and then shook his head. I do not like to depart from my customary sober shades, he said firmly. Perhaps I should make a wager with you, I joked weakly. Monsieur Fogg pinned me with his cold gaze. I do not, he said. Jest about my attire. Ooh, burn. We sat in prickling silence until the commertage pulled into a rot on the border of the Persian Empire and the frontier of the British Indian colonial lands. Maybe groom him a little bit. He's still got 93. He's good. <laughs> Copenhagen bomb threats continue. Good thing we're not in Copenhagen. Vesper, he's just not that into you. <laughs> <laughs> we had our papers inspected by a Persian customs officer with a pair of magnificent extending spectacles uh, made of polished brass and engraved with farsi script along the arms he inspected our documents while turning a small lever behind his ear. A pair of smoked glass lenses slipped over the clear ones, and he inspected our documents once more. You are... Oh, wait. Sorry. Who is this Persian customs officer? You are why they travel. He remarked. We are curious people. I smiled brightly. The customs officer looked at Monsieur Fogg with frank speculation, no doubt failing to see any sign of burning curiosity upon his phlegmatic features. Oh, well, it's none of my business, the official remarked philosophically. Your papers are in order. Good luck with your travels. We, re we repeated much the same experience with the British customs official a few hours later, and so we arrived at Kabul, thoroughly inspected, and officially stamped. Nana Lucas! The traveling cloak should be quite valuable here. Uh, is that a 
Persian rug. Hand woven carpet. And a monkey branch. We have so much stuff what's already. That, what's that um gear? Where are you supposed to sell that gear? I don't remember. Cartoon. Cartoon. Let's explore. As we explored the city, we were rather unceremoniously seized by a score of British infantry and marched along the walls of Kabul, up the mountain ridge, and to the fortress of Bala Hissar. Monsieur Fogg protested our treatment, and I joined my voice to his through my outraged tones rather outmatched, uh, though my outraged tones rather outmatched his calm ones. We were presented to a small bespectacled gentleman in a palatial office, which looked rather more like a court, despite the piles of books and surveyor's equipment littering the floor. He gave us a glance over his spectacle rims. I am Mr. Smythe, second assistant political officer to the British mission here. I do not have the pleasure of your acquaintance. I glanced at my master, who straightened his cuffs, but otherwise looked as though he might have been out for a mid-morning stroll, and had wandered by merest happenstance into an Afghan palace fort. I am Mr. Phileas Fogg, and this is my valet, Passepartout. I am a subject of Her Majesty, and passing through Kabul with no small urgency. Urgency! The political officer's eyes flashed behind his lenses. Pray expand a little upon the nature of this urgency, Mr. Fogg. I... I, 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 I did not like his tone and gave him a sidelong glare for good measure. Monsieur Fogg was not used to being on the other side of the interrogation table and I watched Monsieur Smythe closely as Monsieur Fogg explained his wager and our resultant breakneck trip around the world. I could see Smythe growing more cynical with each word. Finally, he took off his glasses and tapped them on the table. Why, you Russian or Persian spies? He said musingly. You would have a more Plausible story. You go too far, sir, I broke in, abandoning common sense. My master is an Englishman through and through. He probably dreams of Queen Victoria every night. Yeah, I do. I just heard a whoop. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Monsieur Smythe's eyebrow raised in an eerie mirroring of my master's expression. And then he cleared his throat. A friend of mine was traveling to Omsk. I consider it a great favor if you accepted her. Accompanied her. Uh, <laughs> if you accepted her? Omsk is I, quite I, far, I, I hedged. Uh, get her. Yes, but at Omsk you can catch the Trans-Siberian Express all the way to... Who's the risk? Sure. Or change it at Karmiskia for Beijing. He explained. Think of it. He dismissed us and returned his papers with, returned to his papers without a second glance. Bye. Quite a commanding fellow for a mere second assistant political officer. Goodbye. <laughs> it is straight up. Okay, let's take a look at where we're going. We could go on an airship to Omsk. You might get faster with your things above. Or no. It depends if it's the that hot air balloon she was talking about. Off we go. Whee! 
We met the friend of Monsieur Smythe, Her Majesty's second assistant political officer in Kabul, at the airship dock. She was wearing a daring red dress, cut in the Italian style, draped over with a mink coat lined in satin. I greeted her with a bow, and she swept her eyes over Monsieur Fogg and myself before inclining her head. English, probably. Where did Smith dig you two up? She asked rhetorically in the plummy tones of an English aristocrat. Oh, well. Never mind, I'm Lady Sybil. With that, she swept away, leaving me to manage both our bags and her own assortment of traveling cases. I barely had time to join her at the railing before the little Schutland's airship jolted into the air further evidence of the German Empire's heavy investment in Afghanistan's infrastructure. Whee! Greetings, my lady. Passport two, why yes. I hear you can reach Irkutsk from Omsk. You mentioned trains. I've been told <coughs> New Orleans can be reached from San Pedro aboard the Texas and Pacific Railway. What more can you tell me about New Orleans? I've heard that you can obtain trombones in New Orleans that will sell for a fortune in New York. Tell me more about New York. They're building that thing on the island. A cigar, perhaps, my lady? What a marvelous idea. Uh... You're giving her cancer. Tell me more about Irkutsk. Here's something. There is neither bank nor market in New Irkutsk. Uh, is it possible to travel from Irkutsk to Karimskaya? You'd have to ask my secretary, secretary, but you can pick up high-grade iron ore in Karimskaya. You can sell in, in Karimskaya? Sure. You can sell it for profit in Manila. Yes. What more can you tell me about Karimskaya? You can see the Northern Lights from there if you are lucky. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. New Bye. roots discovered from our Bye. conversation. Oh, we're about to hit the states. <laughs> no, Help, Ricky Q. No, I just mean in the map. The first day's travel was quiet enough, yep. drifting idly across mountain tops. I. Huh? Mm -hmm. no. oh. Keep going. I. Uh, played whist with our new friend, and found I lost every game and a sum of money with it, as though she had some accursed demon spying on my cards for her. <laughs> Don't feel bad, Passport Two. She declared. It is a game of chance, as are all things. Night fell, and stars lit up the sky. Lady Sybil joined me in looking at them. Pointing up at one. The dolphin. She remarked. It's the only constellation I know. And why is that, madame? I asked, feeling there must be a story attached. But she only shrugged. It actually looks like a dolphin. It is so rare for things to look like what they truly are, don't you find? <gasps> With that cryptic remark, she left me. I lost money gambling with her. Why were we playing for money? I am at your service, Monsieur Fogg. Pass part two. Uh, may I shave you, Monsieur? Oh. I trust you will be careful. This journey will be most expensive, Monsieur. Indeed. But we can earn a little from buying and selling our possessions as we travel. Monsieur, I will press your shirts. Thank you, Passport Two. That will make me very comfortable. Very good. We were boarded by a half dozen Imperial Russian customs inspectors a few hundred miles into their airspace. Lady Sybil came to me as they checked the pilot's papers. <laughs> Gonna be all right, kids. Night operator. Night operator. 
Oh no. Smooth, Smooth operator. Smooth operator. Smooth operator. Smooth operator. Yeah, shit ah. you. Like someone took them off. They were watching for me. She searched my face. But you'll help me, won't you? Tell them I have traveled with you from London. So you are a spy. She gave me a disappointed look. She didn't take pains to hide it. Smith trusted you. I'm in Her Majesty's service and my mission is vital. Please. What if you are compromised? I wondered. My master cannot languish in a Tsarist jail. He has important business. Then tell them I bribed you, seduced you, threatened you. Disavow me if I am caught. But the proper procedure, anyway. Lady Sybil nodded. I'll agree with whatever you come up with. There was a knock on the door. I considered Lady Sybil. Who was this woman? Was her mission true, or was that another lie? Lady Sybil shot me a last pleading look before the customs inspectors brought in Monsieur Fogg and began their interrogations through a translator. Finally, the question came from a Russian. Do you know this woman? <laughs> <laughs> I stepped forward before Monsieur Fogg could open his mouth and said, What do you guys think? What do we think? Chat? What do you want me to say, everybody? What do you say? Guys? Anybody? Help! Last companion. option, I met her only yesterday. Companion. 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 <gasps> You're the doctor! <laughs> companion. Alright. Companion. She is our companion, I said bold I said boldly. <laughs> we have traveled together from London in pursuit of my master's wager. The officials gave Lady Sybil a bit of a leer, drawing their own sordid conclusions about her position in my our company. I put one arm around the lady to further their suspicions, and at that they took a decision as to my character, and hence the ladies, and gave the matter up. They completed their search of the hold and cabins, and disembarked by nightfall. We had lost a day, but nothing more serious. I am on time form, but we must make haste. <laughs> Her mustache, mustache, mustache. Oh, damn it! Marco, Greetings, Marco. my lady. Why, yes. Now, what do you know about Omsk? I hear the governor of Omsk is, is a very important man. Is it possible to travel from Omsk to Ekaterinburg? That's I would hope not. <laughs> hold out too much hope, monsieur. Is it possible to travel from Omsk to Astrakhan? You'd have to ask my secretary, but some buyers will pay well for woolen cloaks from Astrakhan. That would not be answered to this one. I am a god! <laughs> what is your wish, master? That's part two. There you are. Would you like to consult the altimeter, monsieur? Certainly. Our height will directly affect our speed. Monsieur, I will cre crease your trousers for you. Excellent, my man. Whoa. That would be most pleasing. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> You'd have to remove them first, Master. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday's events loosened both Lady Sybil's tongue and her sickly painted facade. Not really a titled lady. She confessed over lunch in an altogether Here more common accent. <laughs> Grew up in Whitechapel, I did. Um... Why Lady... Is, so. Why yeah. Lady Sybil's in? James, that is, Smith, invented her. Her eyes lit at the mention of his name. I saw how things lay between them, from her side at least. Uh, how did you meet him? She took a deep breath. 
My dad was a coach maker until the artificers guild put him out of business. I took to pickpocketing for mom and dad. Then one day I picked the wrong pocket. She reached for another leg of chicken and devoured it artlessly. James's, that is, Smith's pocket. He recruited me instead of turning me in. How old were you? Eleven. You have been a spy for fifteen years, give or take, I exclaimed, forgetting the impropriety of remarking upon a lady's age. I'm going to be a countess now, that's my mission. Lady Sybil laughed at my expression. <laughs> One of the Tsar's close confidants is looking for a wife, and James has found him, Lady Sybil. You'd marry for your mission? It's my duty she said, without inflection. It's my duty. <laughs> I would be an asset of enormous value to the crown, to James. Something in my face must have given me away, for Lady Sibyl's expression softened. Oh, Pat, you too. You're not a knob. I didn't pay you for a romantic. What about James? I asked, remembering the way she had said his name. Her face shattered. What of it? You care for him. I pressed her. I do. She acknowledged. But duty comes first. Surely you can understand that. I could think of nothing else to do but wish her luck. She took her leave as we tethered the ship at Omsk with the suggestions that we might stop by the governor's house and tell him of our adventures. Uh... I imagine her sometimes as a pickpocket countess spying for the crown. I wonder whether she still thinks of a bespectacled second assistant political officer in Kabul. I do not ever think about her condemned to a czarist jail. My character is now presentable. Hmm. Finally. Seems we can complete our gentleman traveler set here for protection against uncomfortable conditions. There seem to be no departures today. We should explore a little. Fur coat. Top hat. Question star. That's the rest of the gentleman traveler set. Oh yeah, part of the Russian gentleman traveler set. Some stuff that'll be worth money elsewhere. Is there anything you can sell here? You guys are talking about pizza, pizza rolls, and ice cream. I am thoroughly jealous. Oh, hey, we have room for that top hat right there. Hey, hey the... top hat. What about them playing cards? Can you give me even even better? Old trousers? Nice. We don't have anything worth anything. <laughs> you don't really use those gloves. Or do you want to keep them for later? I bet we will on the open road. We had a couple routes early in the game that were open road stuff. What's that Western Star? Point out. Just worth a bunch of money if in we Pyongyang. ever go to Pyongyang. I think we're good for now. Our completed gentleman traveler set should protect against uncomfortable conditions and help us negotiate times of upper class journeys. I guess we're at the hotel. Buy the hammer, you know, for self-defense. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> there was only one hotel on a large square across from a fine-looking residence. Uh, we strolled over to the residence and knocked on the door. We were, after all, quite the most important travelers to arrive in this important city in some time. Important, important. After a while, a maid opened and peered at us through dewy eyes. We are traveling around the world, I announced, hoping to interest her and her employers in our great venture. Nor was I disappointed. The maid dropped a curtsy and ushered us inside, welcoming us like the great explorers we were. We learned that the house belonged to the governor of the province of the Russian steppes, a man named Buckholz. We found him reading the works of Dostoevsky, which he rapidly hid as we entered. We entertained him with tales of our adventures, 
and he assured us we had reached the pinnacle of our adventure here in Omsk. A major hub soon, he whispered, to become an independent state in its own right. We flattered his pride, informing him without a trace of irony that we had never seen such beautiful churches in all our travels through Europe. Indeed, he told us, plans were afoot to bring Omsk to international importance with a Siberian exposition of agriculture and mechanical agriculture implements. Uh, we could have talked this way all night, but to do so might have made me finally scream. So we bade Buckholtz farewell and good fortune. As we left, he asked where we were headed. East, I replied. He smiled. Oh, <clears throat> Russian, right? I think so. Bad, yeah. hmm. But of course, well, you may have trouble heading through Vlad Vladivostok. This Vladivostok? I don't know. Vladivostok. The city is closed all but the military. I asked if he could help, and he smiled. Ah, uh, why not? Taking a pen and paper from his desk, he quickly filled out some military-looking papers for us. These should suffice, he said with a twinkle. And when you return to, to England, please remember Omsk. We sanked him and left him to his seditious reading and dreams of glory. Night-night. What the hell are we? Hacker Clan! Oh, we're all the way over there. And we have a route to get us to Vladivostok. We have no more money under it. The railway... Oof. That is a lot of money. That's... That is that is a lot. <laughs> Oof. Bye, money. Oh no! Oh man! Yeah. Gotta sell some stuff. And that extra luggage is expensive. Yep. Ooh. Oh no! We can't afford it. We need the military papers, so we can't get rid of that. We boarded the Trans-Siberian Express at Omsk Station and settled into our seats. Nina, what what are you talking about? What? I don't know, but you're talking, James. Oh. I do hope you're, you're not spending too much, Passepartout. That money has to last all the way around. Our cash reserves seem to be running low, Passepartout. Oh, dear. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Greetings, Monsieur Disgustin. I mean, Degustin. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Let us share a glass of wine together, Monsieur. <laughs> He's probably Russian. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell me of Vladivostok? I hear the commercial port has been relocated. It is now a military town. Is there a route from Vladivostok to Hong Kong? My good man, you could pick up hunting rifles in Hong Kong. Extremely valuable in Bavaria. What more can you tell me about Hong Kong? Apparently, some buyers would pay well for pocket altimeters from Hong Kong. No. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> the lines are sick here, <laughs> and other trains pass ours frequently. Some are filled with settlers, and others with soldiers, packed into fifth and sixth class cars so closely that I wonder if they can even breathe. I saw a darker train go past. Metal cars with iron gratings that seemed to cast shadows as it moved. It was a prison train, bound for nowhere. The criminals aboard were simply carried backwards and forwards across the mountains, always moving, never stopping. That's terrifying. I could not watch their faces. Their eyes spoke of endless wastes and never-ending movement. Travel is good for the soul, I think, but like all things, in moderation only. 
as we attempt to travel around the world for 80 days. I missed my chance to converse. Here we go. Oh, God, it's so quick. We crossed the halfway mark of our journey today. In the morning, we wound up in the Angara Valley towards the mining camp of Irkutsk, the great city of Siberia, where some passengers were leaving to join routes south into Mongolia. Uh, I persuaded Monsieur Fogg to disembark. As usual, he agreed with little need for persuasion. We hopped down from the train just as its engines began to whine into life once more. Wait, does that mean we... Oh no! You have to sleep here and explore in the morning. Oh no! Pass part two, we'll pass the night here. You did this, you did this. Nighttime in Irkutsk. From nearby, we heard the ferries moving back and forth, lake by call, and nearby, the mining machines cranked on through the night. The local people do not go out at night, I noticed. I could not tell if it was due to devotion or hard work, or if some terror roamed the streets. Whichever, I went out to explore, but found nothing for my wanderings but an old beggar who insisted on reading my poem. I did not let him and returned to the hotel with my future intact, but still undetermined. Did those folks do? Yup. We really messed up here. Oh no. You can go to Beijing. Irkutsk was a surprisingly beautiful town and packed with so many churches that one could not look up at any street corner without seeing a dome or steeple. We explored, entering the city across a bridge made of tethered boats. My acrobatic skills made the crossing easy, despite being loaded down with four cases. Just imagine you doing like, but, Monsieur, like <laughs> somersaults and flips and, and juggling four <laughs> suitcases. But Monsieur Fogg found it a most unpleasant business, and once across, refused to return to the other bank. On a street corner across the water, we saw a group of soldiers stop and turn to face the sun, praying bareheaded. There is a steady calm about this place. The people are both devout and poor, despite the gold that flows through the city every day on its way to St. Petersburg. Uh... Wonder there are no robberies. It's the wonder there are no robberies and hijackings. And with that thought, in my head, I regarded Raise the, the grand Sorry. churches on every corner in a somewhat different, more imposing light. That's our only option, I think, isn't it? Yeah. We were supposed it. to go to there. Oh no. It's gone. Yeah. yeah that. So much money. Down the drain. Uh huh. Cool. And, and oh, this is, oh this, is, this is half of what we have. Oh, Kyle. Oh, oh no. Oh, we'll pass the night here. We're not going to make it. Oh. We took a room and settled in, and I ran a few errands for the hotel here. Earning 48 pounds in fees and tips. How useful. <laughs> <laughs> I so wish it was more than that. Oh, God, we have so much shit, too. Yeah, we should probably sell like, all the material. <laughs> we boarded this steam train from Irkutsk. It was not a passenger service, but was carrying huge quantities of iron ore very slowly indeed. Still, we made ourselves as comfortable as we could. At least we were leaving Russia behind. We can earn a little spending money through selling some of our possessions. Greetings, guard! You two stowaways are comfortable, I trust. I am very interested in Beijing. Beijing Opera is said to be unique, a unique marvel. Uh, 
Is it possible to go from Beijing to Pyongyang? Did you know you can pick up handheld mirrors in Pyongyang? Extremely valuable in St. Petersburg. Tell me more about Pyongyang. Hear this. The quickest way to Pyongyang from here is through Vlad Vladivostok. Whist? I'll cut, guard, and you deal. Don't mind if I do. Do tell me more about Beijing. They say Empress Sixi prefers her automatons to be decorative. Is it possible to go from Beijing to Canton? Sounds unlikely. Uh... Is it possible to go from Beijing to Port Moresby? Talk a lot, don't you? Okay, goodbye then. Bye. Asshole. <laughs> Bye! I am the machine. It oh. felt as though we were the only passengers aboard. Perhaps we were, though I would not have been surprised if the guard had not taken money from a few others and stowed them in the adjoining cars. You have the money. <laughs> Sorry, no McLam. Passport 2. Please. Your care is highly calming. The train swept on through endless countryside, getting faster, <laughs> hour by hour, as it burnt through some of the stocks of coal it carried. Yeah, Bobcom gets it. <laughs> we passed the time in conversation, and amongst other things, I learnt was that you could pick up revolvers in Honolulu, extremely valuable in New Orleans. Evening drew in, and the train thundered on, seemingly without sort of pause. In the evening of the third day, we approached the city of Urga. We had been told nothing about stopping here and had tickets to Beijing, and there seemed no reason to change our plans Unless again, <laughs> so we stayed aboard. An hour went by, perhaps we ref refueled, refueled, and then we were off once more, rattling away through the bleak, empty steps. Whee! Beijing. Cigar! Superb! A quiet day that passed without incident. The train guard came and went, bringing food, a thin soup in which noodles floating like dying worms. You loved Float it, obviously. Floated like dying worms. I did not like it. I have a superior palate, but such a thing is hardly an asset out here in the wilderness. Both of us cannot wait to be in this city. Okay. Not gonna attempt any dialects in Beijing. Just <laughs> no. FYI. As we approached <laughs> Beijing, Monsieur <laughs> Fogg became increasingly animated, ready for the next step of our journey. Some of our positions could earn us well here. Yeah, That's yeah, good. We will have to explore Beijing to do things. What do we have that could earn us See well? See those things that are freaking red? I mean, I mean yellow? Altimeters, I think, were supposed to go well. 19 pounds. No, it was Hong Kong. Uh, and I think you have to buy them in Hong Kong and then they sell well elsewhere. God, we've got nothing! Please come back, market. <laughs> Good burn for me. We need money. Some good market music. Would have been worth so much more uh -huh. elsewhere. I feel like we're not using the railway man set. We're using the gentleman set. Yeah. Right. And I don't care about those. We need to free up a suitcase. So. Got any grapes? Hey, you got any staples? What is happening? There were no airships sailing across the Beijing sky, nor any evidence of electrification. Uh, 
though the Chinese did not shun all technology, palanquins were drawn by intricately worked and gilded iron lions as often as human servants, and I saw animated metal and jade dragons that snapped and glared at passers-by, perhaps to discourage thieving. <laughs> Your dog is leaking air. Always unhappy. The meal is almost 6 a.m. Honey, no! Go sleepy, sweet! <laughs> Furthermore, I was lucky enough to catch a... Performance. Performance of the famed Sui Shi Opera, the cast consisting entirely of hydraulic elegances. Automata by another name. So much automata. Automata. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, no other nation boasted such a tradition, though the Artificers Guild manufactured the bodies and mainsprings of the performers their complex facial mechanisms were built by imperial artisans in strict secrecy. But the opera itself, my friends, it was a glorious spectacle. I would have done with utterly terrifying. <laughs> Though there were few props, the Sui Shi was extravagantly costu were extravagantly costumed and capable of acrobatics that would press the most athletic of flesh and blood actors. We were the guests of a Manchu court official who clearly believed us to be spies or troublemakers of some nature, despite my innocent expression, which was wearing rather false after so many international escapades. As we departed the auditorium, I made a polite inquiry about the Dowager Empress Sixi, who was a figure of near legend in the West. What is this this uh, politician telling us? I don't know. Born into poverty. Who's reading it? <laughs> Bless, you. Bless you. Thank you. Was that you volunteering, Caitlin? No, Absolutely not. <laughs> she was born into poverty and rose through the ranks of concubines and consorts due to her wisdom and wit. He said admiringly. A model of Confucian virtues. We thanked our host and made our way back to our lodgings. A pair of opium addicts were slumped in an alley near our hotel, faces blankly blissful despite the emaciation of their limbs. We're dying. I turned my face away, but could not burn the damning sight from my mind. It infected all my memories of the splendor of Beijing. It's pronounced Shishi. Shishi. What? Shishi? Shishi. 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 Sorry. You... <laughs> Let me die. <laughs> I spent a few hours in exploration, <laughs> learning ways in which we might travel onwards. So expensive. Oh, Remember when that thing came out? Go to Hong Kong. Yeah, go to Hong Kong. You, wasn't there something? Oh, you oh, sold, you sold it. it. <laughs> oh no no really? no 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 no! It was it was the uh, the altimeters, the pocket altimeters in Hong Kong oh, that you buy in Hong you buy Kong in and Hong. sell elsewhere. Yeah. We boarded the Beijing Express for the next leg of the journey through China to Hong Kong. Greetings, Monsieur Lagarde. Good day, Monsieur. What can you tell me of Hong Kong? It is easy to lose oneself in the opium dens of Hong Kong. Uh, which way do we want to go? Maybe Singapore. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's right. Is there a route from Hong Kong to Singapore? Monsieur, really. But merchants in Yokohama will pay fantastic amounts for sheets of tin from Singapore. Do tell me more about Singapore. I know that merchants in San Pedro will pay a huge amount of... <laughs> I'm sorry. That <laughs> hell 
Girls here at the damn singing floor. Whist, I'll cut, Monsieur Lagarde, and you deal. Damn Skippy. What more can you tell me about Singapore? Have you heard that the fastest way to Singapore from here is to go via Manila? What more can you tell me about Manila? The Manila Acapulco galleon trade has been replaced by airships. Is there a route from Manila to Panama City? <laughs> Have you heard the merchants in Dakar will pay fantastic amounts for antique maps from Panama City? Uh, goodbye. <laughs> I'm tired. From Beijing to Hong Kong was another thousand miles, but the train line took a clever route that avoided most of the large towns entirely, running without stopping by the shortest route possible. I passed the time... Watching the scenery go by. You think? Yeah. Why Watching not? the scenery go by and relaxing. Even a valet must take time off. Evening turned to night, and the train did not stop or slow. Oh, I missed it. The countryside fell away to be replaced by busily, b busy, bustling worker towns. Large industrial plants belched steam into the air, and mechanical contraptions stocked between warehouses. I watched with fascination as the countryside turned to the beginnings of an urban sprawl. This would be a city of dirt and filth. And, yes, excitement. Hooray! Good night, mate. Good night. Market oh, altimeter should, should be quite valuable here. Yeah. We'll have to explore Hong Kong. Find downward journey, sorry. I was looking over a bolt of bright red Chinese silk when a man accosted me. This man had a moustache so fine, so luxuriant, so well tended, that I briefly lost the power of speech. Wow. I watched, mesmerized, as it quivered with his every word of introduction. It seemed his name was Fix. He offered me a drink, and given that I had a few hours to spare, I could not in good conscience refuse. His name Fix it Felix? He led me into a dingy basement where a sour faced Chinese woman presided over several tables and a few couches with men and women, mostly Europeans, in various states of lolling intoxication. This is a goddamn opium. <laughs> this is an opium den! What? An opium den! I exclaimed uneasily. <laughs> Uh, good. He told me and ordered us a bottle to prove his claim. It was thin and sharp, but not wholly distasteful. We chatted amiably for a time, and I found my cup filled and refilled most miraculously. Listen, he said abruptly. I am a police detective sent from the London office. You, a detective? I could not hide my incredulity but he presented me with his commission, which seemed in all respects genuine and correct. You have been duped, he resumed. Mr. Fogg's wager is a pre pretext. Last September, a robbery of 55,000 pounds was committed at the Bank of England by a person whose description answers exactly to that of Mr. Phineas Fogg. I... is what? 55,000 pounds, did you it's say? It's bagging refresh. What? What? Are we... now you're good? You're her unit... You alright? You good? Oh, he was saying he needed a refresh. Or okay. she needed a refresh. Uh, uh, yeah, 50,000 pounds, did you say? I slurred, feeling the effects of the bottle of gin. That surely cannot be. 
You know scarcely anything of your master. Fix ground on. You went into his service the day he departed on this so-called wager, carrying little but a large quantity of banknotes. And, uh, uh, too gallant. He is too gallant to be a thief, I protested. Fix strokes his, stroked his moustache. Thieves are frequently gallant. He assured me. Charismatic, even. <laughs> you cannot accuse me, Monsieur Fogg, of charisma, I replied. Fix shrugged. I have not met him. I only know that Scotland Yard have sent me here to capture this fog. The detective hissed a breast which fluttered the tips of his oiled moustache. I could arrest you as his accomplice. Uh, this is this is a pretty major plot point. Um, okay, chat. I have done nothing wrong. I cannot betray him, or I feel dizzy and almost sick. What do you think, guys and girls? Know. Hacker clan. Are you even actually watching anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone even care? <laughs> is there anyone out there? Cannot betray. The mustache no longer seems so appealing. Yeah, seriously. No betray. I cannot betray him. I reply with I replied with a shudder. Even if what you say is true, I am in. I am in his service. My loyalty cannot be bought. I come from a village where they don't eat that kind of bread, Monsieur. <laughs> Fix pressed a pipe into my hand, and I unsinkingly lifted it to my mouth. Stop! As my head began to swirl and spin. My fingers... What is the difference? Shivered. This way or this way? Suddenly I recognized those, these bleary sorts for what they were. Opium-induced meanderings. This is an opium pipe! I accused, standing up so <laughs> abruptly, pass? pipe. Okay. Standing up so abruptly that my chair tipped over. How dare you, sir? Fix chuckled hollowly. I dare, because I must at all costs separate you and your master, as you call me. Then you will fail. Having delivered my dramatic promise, I stalked out of the opium dem without a backward glance. The fresh air cleared my senses a little, and I returned with shaky steps to Monsieur Fogg. Despite the gin sloshing its way through my body, I felt as sober as a judge, and twice as grim. Oh no! Oh no! Dun dun dun! Oh, we already did that. That's the only way to go. Damn it. You passed the night here. I was loath to leave Monsieur Fogg for any lengths of time, having so narrowly escaped the clutches of that black god fix. We explored the city from the comfort of a mechanical sedan chair, but my terrible experience dimmed the colors and tarnished the beauty of the streets. I found myself anxious to leave. To leave land. Off we go. The Jade Tiger was an old Mauge-class Mauge Persian airship, renovated with Chinese colors and fittings. Uh, it was painted all over with Manchu luck symbols, swastiks, stylized bats, and coins. We climbed aboard, ready for the journey east. I am at your service, Monsieur Fogg. Is there anything the matter? How will we cross the Pacific, Monsieur? 
There are many options, but which one we'll choose will decide our route across the Americas. May I shave you, monsieur? I trust you'll be careful. How are our funds? We are running somewhat low. We should pay a visit to a bank. Very good. We can get money out of the bank? I thought we could just deposit money in the bank. We gotta rob it. <laughs> you think? Maybe. Captain Su wore a traditional Manchu pao in blue cotton, bone hairpins Hi, in her fair shaped hair. Good night. Good night, Silver. And a jade sun ring. I bowed low in courtly greeting. She looked at me quizzically and then asked a series of questions in Cantonese. I thought so, in any case. It sounded similar to Mandarin, which I had picked up a little of on the mainland. An English-speaking crew member was summoned, her tool belt hung with rope, bolt cutters, and climbing equipment. The captain says she expected you to speak Cantonese. She translated. Because you were in Hong Kong. I... Uh, I... I speak several languages, I retorted. It just so happens that Cantonese is not one of them. The crew member rattled her, her, her bolt cutters at me. Captain speaks Cantonese, Mandarin, three dialects of Manchu, Russian, and Arabic. Are any of those known to you? I speak a little Mandarin, I offered weakly, though only a very little. The captain, for all her delicately arranged hair and grace, looked through thoroughly exasperated and stalked off in a huff. The crew member chuckled and stuck her hand out at me. I have no idea. Song Shuyin, probably. Yeah, would be my guess. Looks like I'll looks like I'll be looking after you and your master this trip. Uh. Uh, Madame Song, I ventured. Song Shu Ying shuddered. Song Shu Ying. Shu Ying? Shu Ying. Shu Ying? Fine. Try not to mangle it too much in <laughs> past part two. Yeah. Her pronunciation was, of course, flawless. Merde. Shit. <gasps> That's the bay. Oh! Monsieur Fogg took exception to the moss-eaten red silk drapings which adorned our cabin and asked me to take them down for the duration of the voyage. Is it their color that distresses you? I asked. That's you, Jake. Oh. Uh, does it matter? He replied with perfect equanimity. Uh, I suppose it does not. In the end, I replied, attempting to consider the matter from my master's ever logical perspective. Song Shu Ying looked terribly surprised when she came to fetch us for dinner and saw the bare walled room. Uh, my master is a plain fellow, I explained. How nice for him to have the luxury of taste. Was her only remark, but I felt it sting keenly. Shit. We dined in the captain's quarters, accompanied by Song Shu Ying. Uh. Carly. Yes. Can you do it again? Okay. Do you need to stand up? No, we'll we'll Finish we'll wrap this up soon. We're we're Let's about see. halfway through the eighty days. Almost two thirds. Yeah, it's it's a good. We're getting we're getting to a good stopping point, I think. Um. Let's at least finish this journey, and then we'll call it a night. Um, the captain's shelves groaned under the weight of so many books, and I counted six composite recurve bows hung on the walls. Archery and Russian novels. What an unexpected combination. Song Shu Ying leaned closer. The captain loves archery almost as much as she loves the jade. Um, where did she learn it? 
Therein lies a tale. The crew member smiled with relish. The captain's father was too old and weak to join the army, and so Captain Percy put on the clothing of a boy and rode out to take his place. How daring of her! I gasped. <gasps> it was a grave risk, but she served for twelve years and gained so much honor that when when she was discovered, the general gifted her with an airship and forgave her deception. How marvelous! I looked at the captain with admiration in my eyes, and she narrowed her gaze at me, and then at Song Shu Ying, who paled. Oh dear. She muttered. I think the captain irritated her telling tales. She is very modest, as befits a great hero, I said. Um, yeah, I suppose. Song <coughs> Shu Ying mumbled, and fell silent for the rest of the meal. A most stimulating <coughs> dinner at the captain's table, all told. Kyle, are you thinking of having a P.O. box? I, yes, I have been for, for a little while. We tethered at Yokohama in the early afternoon. My eye passed lightly over the slope-roofed buildings, carriages, and bare cherry trees. I made a particular effort to sank... Uh... Song Shu Ying for an entertaining journey, for she had been an excellent, if fanciful, translator. Think nothing of it. She advised, shaking my hand with her calloused one. Good luck. I. Oh. Uh, ready, passport too. My master called. Of course, monsieur, I replied eagerly, and followed him on to Japanese soil. Must visit the bank, Monsieur Fogg declared. You have additional funds. I am a gentleman. They would extend me credit if required. He replied. But do you suppose I put my entire fortune into a carpet bag under your supervision? I did not answer. I regarded the manager of the bank. We entered. A small, sweaty woman who greeted us with suspicious glee. You wish to withdraw funds? We were told. I warn you, it may take some time. Oh! It's Friday. Oh! Oish. Well, balls. Balls, <laughs> balls, 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 balls. We require 700 pounds, I said. The manager nodded. Uh, I will have to communicate with London first, of course. She apologized. I should have a reply on Monday. It seems, Monsieur Fogg remarked as we left, we have some time to dispose of. Bye bye, Shay. We must return to the bank on Monday I don't know what any of that meant. I meant I used to study Japanese. But it was a long time ago. I knew the I am part. <laughs> or I did. Me knew the I. Kashiwa. Kashiwa. It's the part I'm talking about myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ahead and explore, and then we're gonna call it a night. Okay, there's airships I shouldn't be getting too involved in this. That looks like the route we want to take. You can go to space somewhere. It was hard to believe that Yokohama had only relatively recently opened to foreigners. There was an entire foreigner's district not far from the waterfront, where it was as common to hear Chinese or Russian as Japanese. Uh, there were several varieties of English to choose from as well, 
though Monsieur Fogg would have barely deigned to include the nasal tongue of the American merchants. Hey! <laughs> I noticed a Japanese man watching the scene with a look of intense concentration and scribbling in a sketchbook. Uh, I leaned in for a look. He was drawing a stylized picture of the foreign quarters with quick pen strokes, which stopped abruptly as my shadow fell over the drawing. He looked up, clearly irritated. Jesus. No. Oh. Who's what? gonna, who's what gonna, just, Dutch, just French, pick, and just English. pick one, just pick one. Do you mind? He said, his accent an unholy mix of Dutch, French, and English. I'm making a drawing for a woodcut. Uh, why does that American appear drunk, I wondered aloud, and he covered his drawing jealously. It is an artistic impression, of course. He stressed. Well, it is certainly artistic, I allowed. The scene on the page was much more lively than the merchants haggling and their wives and children riding about in carriages. You are very strange people, he pronounced after a brief silence. Everyone is strange, I replied softly, thinking of my travels. He shrugged, so clearly unconvinced. He colored one of the women's skirts lovingly, his hand on the page much gentler and kindler than his voice had been. Finally, he thrust the paper in my direction, assuring me that it was only a preliminary sketch. I accepted gracefully, charmed that he had chosen to bestow a gift upon a mere stranger. I stored it carefully. It was a fine souvenir of Yokohama. Renberry, arigatou gozaimasu. Demo, watashi wa jōzu janai desu. The Yokohama sketch should fetch a price here. In San Pedro, actually. Sorry. <laughs> All right. San Pedro. That is where we are going to end tonight's broadcast. So let's go back to the camera. And then let's take a peek over here. Let's look. See what else we got to say to everybody. Let's see here. Going back. Mina Souchi gave us 100 bits and said, I demand that next stream is Kung Fu Panda Smash with everyone or I'm going to riot. All well, right. Prepare to riot then. <laughs> ah, something Green hosted us with one viewer. Thank you very much for that. Thank Operator 210 gave us five bits and said, Sending you bits and seeing if I can do anything to have at pod 153 except my commands. <laughs> Oh, why is Pod153 not accepting your commands, Operator? I'm oh, sorry. Kizimus resubscribed and said, Two months! Gosh. And Lirine resubscribed and said, Thank you so much for your streams. Helps me get through the week and never fail to make me happy. Aww. Love you, Kyle, Caitlin, Laura, James, and Hacker Clan. Less than three. The sub's coming for my first paycheck ever. I couldn't be happier to support this. <laughs> Oh, thank awesome. you, Lirne. So That's, That's so amazing. kind. That's awesome. I'm thank so you. proud of you. Congratulations. Join the workforce. That's scary oh, stuff, man. I, I appreciate that so much. Okay. Um, we... That Operator funny. has that thing where you can't see her chat. That's so weird. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Operator. Okay, we have one more little bit of housekeeping we need to do before we sign off for the night. What we gotta do? We have to find out... What we gotta do? ...what our next channel emote is. What? <gasps> Hole. Stop. Woo! Doop, 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 this doop. is... This is not... Why is this not working? She's emailing Twitch to get it fixed. Okay, that's good. That didn't work at all. Let's go in through this version of the app. Uh, da, 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 da. They think it's the omelet. Pull. Stop. Who's going to do it again? Uh, a drum roll. Did it work? I don't know. I stopped drum rolling. It didn't work. Why isn't it working? That's pretty cool bugs, huh? Pull. Close. 
We stopped it already. It said, it said Mina. It works, says Jay. Sad. I stopped it already? I didn't see it. You did not see it. Oh, damn it. Greg, snag it. Now I gotta go back and see if I can find out what it said one. You can no longer vote on anything. Sad one with nine. That's that is the crying alm. The crying alm. Crying alm oh, is the sad one. I want to see it. Show uh, it to me. Let's see if I can pull it up. Oh, it's that it one. That? <laughs> oh, crying alm. You're pathetic. Look at you. <laughs> Dude, the art is great. It's just like it makes me so sad. That, they... that was the one that got the most votes. That makes sense because they want. Yeah, they want a emotes. they want a sad emote so when to one use. Sad, they can use it. Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, congratulations to Sad Bloom, who now has three <gasps> emotes what? in the uh, sad Bloom. in the channel chat. Wow. So congratulations to Sad Bloom. Cool. All them um, talents and skills. That's great. I, I we still have. Do we have another one? We still have one more slot open at what the moment. More? So. One Continue sending in your submissions, and of course, as we get more subscribers, more, more slots, slots open up. So, uh, <laughs> slot is a fun word. All right, today. um, that is gonna do everything. My question to you guys, yes. which I will probably pose in a Twitter poll, is: Should we continue our playthrough of 80 Days, or, or do you guys not care about this game, and should we move on to something else? Right. Um, that is gonna be. I'm, I'm going to put that in a Twitter poll tomorrow, I believe, or maybe tonight. I don't know. I'm going to vote. Move on. Um, so that's, uh, that, is my, that is my question for you. Yes. Um, if we do finish this, this game, it'll probably be finished on our, last, on our next playthrough. Um, on our next playthrough, our next, next stream. Um, oh, when do you want to do which that? is the other thing I need to look at. Calendar. Let the dog down before she does. Oh my goodness, Chloe. Before she throws herself. Um, Kyle hasn't played The Witcher, so I don't think he knows what Gwent is. Uh, I don't. I, however, enjoy Gwent. I like The Witcher. I actually have Sunday evening open, so we're going to do a Sunday... Let's say three o'clock Sunday afternoon. I won't be here. I don't think any of us that will be all just you. Where are you guys all I'm gonna working. be? He's working. I am accompanying people to uh, Universal. Ah, uh, bummer. Yeah. Caitlin's thing will be over. That's part of why I said that. Right. Okay. Will you guys be here in the evening? Um, I'll might. be. Should be up around. And I have no idea. Probably around six. Hmm. I mean, probably there's not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you though. I yeah 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Well, sure. I will let you guys know when our next broadcast is. When I know what our next broadcast is. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, but it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be long. It'll be it, if it's not this weekend. It'll be early this coming week. Okay. Um, Are you super full on Friday? I'm. I'm. Are you reserving that for like? Well, I'm. I'm getting work done tomorrow, and it's it's uh, Friday is loud and annoying. It's oh right. Broadcast night, so I don't yeah, want to do that. Um, so that's, uh, that's the plan. We'll figure it out. Um, Jay makes a very good point. If you join the Twitch desktop chat, uh, you will, uh, you will get pinged every time I make an announcement pertaining to the channel. So mm -hmm. you can do that. Um, obviously if you follow me on Twitter, you'll, you'll get announcements there as well yep. i don't announce quite as frequently there just because i don't want to bombard people who don't watch the twitch with stuff mm -hmm. but uh but if you hang out in the twitch desktop messenger app you'll uh you'll get stuff there so that's good yes 
Um, okay, so that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all so much yeah. for watching. Yeah. Love you all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I found out what? from a YouTube comment Oops. the other day yes. that um, when the Yorha units say glory to mankind, yeah. they salute with their left hand over their chest because they felt like they were not worthy to imitate humans so closely. So we've been doing it wrong. No, we've been doing it right because we're humans. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> well, but... You... But I'm I'm 9S. Not really. So, I mean, I know. <laughs> anyway. You do know Kyle's not actually 9S. <laughs> Are you a robot? <gasps> how Surprise! Did they, how did I know his name? It was in a script. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are humans, we the hacker clan are not. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing it right. You are glorious humanity. Oh. Only Kyle has to use his other hand. Okay, I see. All right, well, in that case, on the count of three, everybody. I'm just going to use both hands. <laughs> One, two, three. Glory, Glory to, to mankind. mankind. Good night, all of you. Night, night. Good morning, whatever. Hello.